something's fishy. Hey guys, I'm Sharkzone, and in today's video, we will be doing an ultra ultimate advanced guide to Fizz, where I'll be going over everything like his champion's identity, every ability, summoner spells to take, runes to take, builds to take, combos to do, how to play the early, mid, and late game, how to play against ranged lanes, melee lanes team fighting, how to carry low elo games consistently, where the carry potential lies, how to consistently carry every single one of your games at the top tiers, early laning phase tips, biggest mistakes I see, how to counter fizz, and an ultra matchup guide. By the end of this guide, hopefully you'll be able to learn fizz to the core from a master tier plus level, and if you do, make sure to smash that like button, comment for the algorithm below, and hit that subscribe button to see more like this in the future, and turn on that post notification bell. It would honestly and truly help me out a lot knowing that I put hours and hours into this guide, and knowing from my analytics, usually when I do edited style videos, they don't do too well, so please, smash that like button because it just helps me out a ton. So Fizz as a champion and his identity, exactly why you would want to play him is because in the early to mid game, you can influence pretty much the pace of the game, the 2v2 skirmishes that may happen in the jungle to control jungle pressure, get solo kills in almost every single lane, even into counter picks pre-6, have early objective control if you're able to gain a lead in the early game, and you are literally one of the best roamers in the game knowing that your R is on a really low cooldown and you have tons of mobility. With this super hyper aggressive playstyle, you having gap closers on top of your E mobility and a low cooldown shark, this champ will teach you a lot about the games when it comes to aggression, pushing leads, how to create leads for yourself, and just have that solo carry mentality because this is one of the champions where you are literally playing aggressive from the pre-first back to trying to make plays every time your R's off cooldown and so forth. You're of course an assassin, which means you basically delete anyone who's squishy if you're even or ahead, and most of the time, of course, you'll be ahead. And with the season 11 items, he is in a pretty good spot with Rocket Belt, Night Harvest, and I guess later in the video, I'll be explaining Leandri's Tournament being very good choices and all have their pros and cons if you want a champion to escape low to mid elo where his win rates of course the highest this is the champion to go since they don't necessarily know how to play to his weaknesses and on top of that there's going to be plays that just present themselves you don't even have to do anything too advanced to set them up but it's just off players mistakes which will gain you leads and snowball a lead but ideally why you want to play this champ in general is if you're looking for a again super carry oriented champion wanting someone that doesn't scale more is on the proactive side of things looking for the next move looking for the next roam looking for the next pick how can i set this up how can i go for a tower dive and so forth this is the champion for you because well he is right now in my opinion the best at it in the meta so now that we're on the summoner's rift we are going to be covering all abilities on fizz and exactly how to use them why you would want to use them and so forth now to go over his passive basically fizz is ghosted and the more ap you build the less damage you take from all sources so i mean there's not really much you could do mechanically wise to enhance this but just know the more ap you get the less damage you take and uh fizz is ghosted now onto your q urchin strike is just a physical and magical ability which means that it basically is an auto it works with an auto since yeah it's kind of like an empowered auto in a way but it also works with man magic damage which is what you build it's a gap closer this is what you're going to be using to gap close two enemies maybe dodge skill shots in lane if they're throwing it at you and just in general is a source of mobility too your w's on auto reset the first time you use your w it is going to be really empowered and after that, for 5 seconds you will deal additional auto damage, just extra on hit damage, that really does hurt a lot, and uh, yeah, it also resets mana cost off of minion kills, so you could farm under tower with this, you don't have to worry about getting oom, um, and it's just a really good ability knowing that Fizz in the early game, his kit, kind of makes him get shoved under tower knowing that you're weak pre-6 so when you get shoved under tower your w is going to be used to actually farm the creeps uh efficiently under tower and it's really easy to do so your e makes you go untargetable for 0.75 seconds you flop down dealing a huge aoe burst 
This, of course, being one of the most hated abilities in League since you could dodge basically all skill shots and if you use it at the proper time, you literally outplay opponents left and right. Whether it's Ari Charm, whether it's ZR, whether it's Syndra E, you can outplay it if you press one button. If you double hop, it does the same damage, but it's in less of a radius, so as you see. It's really good if, let's say, they're almost dead, you don't want them to flash. Like, this is so flashable. It gives them one second to flash, you could just do that, double hop. They don't expect it knowing that Fizz players don't usually double hop unless they completely master the champion. And yet they don't prioritize doing that. So your ultimate shark, the further you throw it, the bigger it gets, the more damage it does, the more area damage effect it has. And it knocks back close targets, which makes immobilizing, not immobilizing, but separating targets, especially if you're able to land this on a flank onto a carry and they have like an all the star peeling let's carries become in a pretty vulnerable spot where any assassin can get to them like the fizz especially if you're flanking in team fights you toss out the shark combo that up with your ewq and yeah they're pretty much deleted but you, oh i'll go cover this later in combos but you could also cancel it with your q to make it a lot more slippery it's a pretty easy mechanic to get the hang of but i guess it will uh Take a couple games or so, a couple attempts. I recommend going in practice tool, practicing it, and until you get really comfortable doing this, knowing that it may be able to cheese a killer too. All right, so now that we are talking about combos after we just talked about the abilities, the most simple one to do in lane, especially against melee lanes or ranged matchups that are going for really great CS is auto W. Of course, after you auto W, you could auto again if you can for the electrocute e out if it bursts them to like three fourths and then that's just a really good trade or you want to do an extended one with auto w e so that way you proc electrocute but also you know if you auto w auto and then e away that will also proc electrocute very simple combo to get the hang of and it cheeses people in platinum three lower a lot especially if they're low and kind of greeting in lane is Pretend you're farming the wave with your E, flash on top of them at the last second. They don't expect it. Follow that up with WQ to proc electrocute, and hopefully they'll get the kill. Like that. Pretty easy to get the hang of. Not really too difficult of a mechanic, but again, I guess get into practice tool if you're absolutely new at Fizz. And this even works in high elo, especially if it's in a team fight setting. Let's say. You land your shark, all their team is focusing you, flash on top of them, then WQ. After that, you could Zonius. And, well, it's just a really good combo at catching them by surprise, and if you know you have the damage to just one-shot them. Another laning combo you could do is, let's say Syndra E's, dodge it, whatever an important ability is, you always want to time it with your E, so that way it negates a lot of potential CC or damage that comes out. E, flop. Auto W for the reset and then auto. And then you could either walk away or go on for an extended trade with your Q and then maybe look for kill threat with your E. Like that alone has a lot of kill potential. E, auto W, and then you still have your Q, but you're on top of them. It hits them with a slow radius knowing that you're flopping down with your E. And then you follow up with your Q. Then, yeah, it's pretty good. Now this combo is if you really want to go for an extended trade, but it's kind of risky knowing that you use all your abilities and if you don't kill them, if they have abilities up, like Cassiopeia has really consistent QE damage, you'll get wrecked. But it's Q, auto, W, E, auto, auto. It's good if you want to like burst them to one fourth HP, but only do this when you're pretty ahead in lane at that given moment, whether it's an item lead, a kill lead, or a summoner spell lead, because they can retaliate pretty easily, especially if you're doing it on their side of minions. So they have a lot of room to fight back, but it's a pretty good combo in just dealing a lot of damage. Now, this is like the most simple one-shot combo. It's R, E, W, Q. You can time it so that way everything hits at once like this. Like that, basically it's a 
one shot combos so your goal is to one shot them uh there's also other things you could pair it up with like r e proto w q ignites pairing that up with proto after you use your e because you could actually use your e when you're in q state or e state and then do something like that i'll show you one more time it's r e proto belt w q ignites auto attack r e proto belt w q ignites auto attack that probably deals yeah it does deal maximum amount of burst damage and another mechanic just to get the hang of is e proto belt gap close on top and then w q i mean it procs proto belt it deals really good burst it's really good at catching people off guard or not off kind of off guard but more or less if they think they have distance on you Gap close protobel on top of them, and it gives you movement speed if you're walking. I think it's towards the target, right? Yeah, towards enemy champions for two seconds. So it's pretty, pretty good. Just a little tip and trick with your E, especially late game, you could E over a wall for one second, E back gives vision over drag, especially if your jungler's looking for a steal. Oh, I shouldn't have placed the word there, but yeah. As you saw, E over the wall, E back. Don't mess it up, go like this. That's a bronze mistake. Get the hang of things. Go into the practice tool. Do it a couple of times. Go over which walls you could do it over. See, you can't do it over this thick wall, but you can do it over thin walls. Thick wall, it's only here. Same thing goes for Baron or Rift. Thin wall, thick wall. Only over this thin wall. And it also works on other walls, but again, Try to get the hang of things krugs too but it's mostly going to be over objectives all right so as for summoner spells to take we're going to go with what has the highest pick rate of course being ignites and flash and in 99.95 percent of situations even into counter pick lanes you take ignite it's how you want to play fizz aggressive wanting to get a lead early game that ignites will add along with your w burn and you want to burst people get that lead snowball that's into items and ignites the way to go the other option to go is teleport flash i've actually tried this on a smurf and i of course succeeded with it knowing that well it's a smurf i was smurfing in low diamond just to see what this is all about and the only reason why you would ever want to take tp is if you want to make more romy style plays bot and top but you're really prioritizing on Fizz getting ahead in the laning phase or in the 2v2 jungle mid versus jungle mid situation. So just take Ignite and Flash. You'll thank me later. It's just the best thing to do. The only reason why I would say take Teleport is maybe in high, high elo where roaming becomes a bit more important. Nah, nah, I, I wouldn't even say that. I, you're not Echo. There's no, there's no point in the early to mid game where you're trying to take things slow only in of course certain matchups before your first back but after your first back you're you're literally playing aggressive so a night and flash are the way to go all right now to talk about runes this is the most standard rune page the one that has been getting taken most in na at least and well it does everything that fizz is wanting to do which is have extra burst with a lux cute have extra magic penetration with sudden impact gain permanent ap adaptive force on unique takedowns for more damage mid to late game ravenous hunter extra omni vamp which is cool triumph you're going to be in really close fights mid and ignites may be the reason why you die so if you kill them it will heal six percent knowing that they ignite you but that could still save your life and then cope to grace because you're an assassin you're going to deal damage if they're at low hps you deal a little bit more damage and uh yeah it's pretty fun the only thing you maybe want to switch out is this with adaptive force but no this this has the higher win rate it helps you trade knowing that it, it raises your attack speed and farming under tower becomes a lot more manageable and then of course this you either take armor or magic resist depending on which laner you are playing against ap or ad and uh yeah let's go on to some of the unique pages that others are going i have to lower the sound my bad korean p 
picks. It's not even that different. If you check win rates, they are actually taking presence of mind. The reason why they're taking presence of mind is because Fizz received nerfs recently, making his mana a little bit less per level. So by the time you hit level 11 plus, you're starting to know that you can't you can't E as often as you once would. And well, if you have no mana, you're pretty much useless. They get presence of mind. You get champion takedown, you get mana. And also when you damage enemies, you get mana. So it kind of just solves the problem. You're losing out on Triumph, but it just fixes the nerf problems in their eyes. Now, there's also a variation to this, which is getting Mana Flow banned instead of Presence of Mind. And personally, I guess that's just a me thing. I personally just like Cope the Grace and Presence of Mind does do wonders, especially if you could check the charts of how much mana it regens. It's, it's pretty good. Yep, so... And you also get Transcendence, which is cool and all, but Fizz usually has enough cooldown reduction, especially with all of his items early to mid game, giving him CDR. And you even, well, have the option of getting Lucidity Boots. Most time you want Sorks, but I would recommend sticking with this page if you just want to play on the standard side of things or think about taking the Korean Presence of Mind page. Now, there's this old Mango Fish. Uh, oh, yeah, there's this old Mango Fish rune page that he used to take where he would take zombie ward because level one he takes sweeper he takes sweeper throughout the game that's how he gets his vision is through sweeping hitting the wards it places a zombie ward down and then that's his warding i guess but especially if you're on na i'd never bother taking this and even now he has opted towards eyeball collection in most of his matchups so basically if i had to say something it would be i'd recommend this page or i'd recommend this page whichever one it's your cup of tea I, I don't know whichever one you feel more comfortable on i'd definitely recommend you take personally for me it's this but i'm not here to judge take the standard one because i mean it's still good so good now as for builds starting item you could start corrupting potion during the, uh, dark seal and refillable but 99.98 times you just you want to start uh Corrupting Potion just gives you a lot of healing. Even into lanes you counter, the extra AP will help and all, but the sustain just means a ton and you can still play aggressive. And the only reason why I think about taking Dark Seal and Refillable is if you're literally smurfing because if you're playing within your rank MMR, Corrupting Potion will just be better basically every, every game. Just start Corrupting Potion. So as for early game buys, after your first back, if you back with 350 gold, get the Dark Seal. If you back with 650 gold, get the Dark Seal and Boots. If you back with 750 gold, some people think about getting Dark Seal, Duran Ring, and uh, what was it? Yeah, Dark Seal, Duran Ring, or they'll get Dark Seal, Boots, and a Vision Ward. I mean, the thing about getting Duran Ring is it really does help your early game knowing that, yeah, killing minions restores mana. And yeah, you deal additional physical damage to minions. Cool. Also grants really good AP and HP stats, which is also good for trading. But you building the, the reworked mythic items, you have to build three things, which is the Hextech Alternator, Blasting Wand, and a Ruby Crystal. Those three slots, you probably can't get along with boots if you have these two. So you probably will have to sell it early on. But if you have 750 gold, you want raw damage because in that laning phase damage means a lot then you can get dark seal Duran ring but most of the time early game depending the matchup if you get harassed out i don't know well galio you could choose early game kills uh lissandra i don't know mages who poke you out early you have to back with 650 gold on a good back with like a cannon wave coming to your lane so it's a good back dark seal Duran ring or dark seal boots or some situations dark seal during ring is going to be your ideal first back second to third back you of course want to get your hextech alternator as early as possible and tier two boots actually mean a lot so like i said you're going to get dark seal and boots trying to get sork boots before like the 10 to 12 minute mark is going to be pretty good as in you're going to be able to roam a lot more efficient go to side lanes go back to lane so that way you list you 
miss less minions you're going to have magic penetration for more bursts and it's just a really nice item to get in the early game since movement speed does mean a lot especially when you're playing assassins people have been experimenting with ionian boots personally for me i think that the reason why in korea this is more prioritized over sword boots is because their play style is literally fight 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 and even the challenger in na oce eus it doesn't compete with korea all right korea they're a, <laughs> they are the only server or whatever super servers they might have that have the most aggressive early game means everything or else you just lose type play style and they get lucidity boots that way they're ease off cooldown more often and r because you're going to be using your r whenever it's off cooldown and your cooldown will be less but in na i just prioritize sword boots because your cooldowns on your r is probably going to be around 80 seconds which is good and having more damage having more burst deleting targets is going to be key over having more cooldown reduction but dealing less damage because if you can't kill the target in the first place why are you even playing fizz as an assassin but if you get lucidity boots usually it's going to be 2v2 fights and so forth so it, or that's what i'm talking about uh korean challengers so lucidity boots having your cooldowns up means more than actually having the damage damage means just a lot more i prioritize sword boots boots of choice i pretty much just explained it yep Sork Boots, you just want to prioritize in general and has the highest win rates in the majority of regions and ranks. So, yeah. Now, as for standard builds, my standard build, it could be different for other people because I'll explain the choices you have, is Hextech Rocket's Belt with Magic Pen Boots Zonius. Magize if you're snowballing. If you're not snowballing, skip out on this. And then go Lich Bane second. Death cap right there. And then you just don't get Lich Bane. But that's basically the standard lineup for me. Because mobility means a lot. You get extra damage if you actually land the Proto Belt active. And on top of that, the movement speed is just... It's, you can't beat it. Having movement speed to guarantee engages means a lot. Getting picks and so forth gives a good amount of AP good amount of ability haste hp all that jazz and it's just a really good item since the myth the mythic passive again i emphasize on playing more of a damagey version of fizz besides getting zonias of course because the active means a ton in team fights and just saving you in general making you be able to do more damage too since once the active runs away or runs out you could use your abilities again when they're back up emphasizing on damage right Hexag Rocket Belt, really good, early to mid, and that's what you play Fizz for in all of your games, is for the early to mid, getting a snowball, and carrying that way. Zonia second, I see people switching this out for Lich Bane, the only reason why I say buy Lich Bane is if you're literally going to win the game, you don't need Zonias, they have nothing to CC you with, focus you with, you're always going to live in team fights, and... Well, you just you're just a killer machine. You're like eight and no by ten minutes. You know what I mean? But another reason is if you're really behind, Zonias wouldn't do you more good because on Fizz, your job is to assassinate the most important target. Whether that's the Cassiopeia mid, whether that's the Jinx ADC along with a Janna support, you need to get to them. If you don't do that, you are literally useless. So of course getting behind sucks and all, but if you get behind, you need damage get lich bane second and then third item if you really yeah if you really just need damage get the rabadon's death cap because zonias is good most of the time if you're playing for team fights you're snowballed people are focusing you you need the active because the active is huge especially for outplay potential and well it just wastes three seconds of their time they're them trying to cc you and your backline can just destroy them I'm going to talk over some weird item choices people may think about going after Protobelt. Maybe think people think about going Nauseous Tooth. Kind of like Echo since, well, he has his passive, right? Fizz has his W. It gives a good amount of AP, attack speed, and AP on hit. The reason why this doesn't work is because of Fizz's champion identity. It's burst. I want to burst you from 100 to 0 as quick as possible, as fast as possible. Nauseous Tooth, I mean, the attack speed is cool and all, but... It's EWQ, R-E-W-Q one shot. It's not really auto, auto, auto. The more you auto, the more room you give your enemy to CC you, lock you down, and you die. So 
getting Lich Bane over Nostra's Tooth is usually better. Banshee's Veil, in some situations, maybe may, may be better, like one out of 10 times in your games, maybe, I don't know, maybe even less than that, because the active is too strong on Zonius, you can get the Banshee's Shield off, and boom, you're CC'd, you're dead. So, I mean, if, especially if they're heavy AP, if they're heavy AP, their lockdown isn't that insane, then think about Banshee's Veil, but other than that, I mean, usually Zonius is just the way to go, always, especially because you're getting its second item, so. Merlin Omicron, uh, I just don't, think <laughs> well okay against vladimir against swain you may want to think about getting it for the laning phase because uh what, what is it called the orb may help right but you have ignite so you don't need it that much and on top of that it's just way better if an 80 person builds it if your team is just they don't listen to you you, you have to get it it is what it is replace lich bane with this but you're you're losing out on burst if you're building morellos i recommend you get other people to build it and if they don't, then it is what it is. But yeah, that's Marilla and Omicron for you. And until they add magic penetration, I just like how it was last season. I don't recommend it. Magi's, get it if you're snowballing. You're going to get Dark Seal your first back. So yeah, always like 99 times out of 100. You're going to get Dark Seal your first back. If you snowball, you have 10 stacks. It is almost always worth it to buy Magi's. It is so gold efficient and it sells for like barely any less than what you paid to buy it and the uh the risk and return is uh well it's pretty low risk and it's high reward because you get a lot of ap mid game and it's really good if you're snowballing everfrost i mean this is kind of troll you don't use everfrost on things <laughs> proto buck basically if you want stick potential you want them to be frozen honestly just get proto belt because well it grants you engage just that's what you want from Everfrost, if you ever think about it. And it also, some people think about, it might fix the mana problem this has, but the build path is kind of awkward. Getting lost chapter early game makes you lock out on damage early on, especially because Hexic Alternator just will help with your burst, and I, I wouldn't recommend it. Breathmaker, some people have been experimenting it against tanks, especially some Fist top players that play him top because, well, they're one tricks and never play anything but Fist. And I mean, I guess against really, really tanky compositions, you may want to think about Riftmaker. But if you're playing in mid lane, uh, don't really bother to take Riftmaker. And Cosmic Drive, uh, it's basically what it does is damaging, dealing damage with abilities grants 10 plus 20% ability haste. Ooh. And a movement speed for four seconds. Most people get it for the movement speed. Fizz doesn't really need it because, well, there's Night Harvest and there's Protobelt. The one shot build, I mean, it's. Yeah, pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Protobelter, Night Harvest, Lich Bane, Magic Pen Boots, Death Cap, Veg Ice, Void Staff, or yeah, just that. Med just don't don't get Veg Ice, just get that. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, that's basically it. To explain Mango Fish, um, to explain Mango Fish's build and why it works in Korean Challenger not really na i've experimented with it for a long time actually because i wanted to see the appeal not through other people's speculations but with my own experience and other people's speculations so the reason why it works in korea like i said is fights break out a lot more often you're going to be making a lot more plays with your ultimate knowing that it's on a 60 second cooldown and it's not damaged you're going to go dark seal during ring boots first back second back codex and possibly ionian boots or yeah you just rush tier two boots really good starting items but the uh seekers with zonia's is kind of just poopy he makes tower dives he roams top and bot a lot and he makes it work i mean a lot of people can't make it work and it actually believe it or not has the lowest win rate build in high ranks not sure about korea because well the people who play fizz in korea they're, they're they're just built different but eu na oce this build has the lowest win rate compared to rocket belt compared to proto belt it has the lowest win rate because well it takes a certain level of skill to make it work and after this zonius you get leontry's tournament first or uh, second and it's much more of a scaly item the reason why they prioritize this over proto belts in night harvest is because again it gives cdr what they want 
early game, Lost Chapter, and I think it's Codex. Does, it won't work as well as Proto Belts and Night Harvest because, again, Hexic Alternator does not beat Lost Chapter whatsoever on Fizz. I mean, Fizz does technically, you could say, have a mana problem, but at that point, he might have a damage problem. Leandre's Tournament will definitely scale harder than Hexic Rocket Belts and Night Harvest, but when are you ever playing Fizz for scaling? Fizz's champion's identity is early to mid. You want to stomp. You want to make plays. You want to destroy them as fast as possible, as hard as possible before they can build defenses. You kind of fall off late game depending on what they build and how they play. Leandre's tournament kind of slows you down from that. So, I mean, this part is all for early game. And if you can make it work, go for it. But I would never recommend touching this up until like... Grandmaster tier plus. I'm not here to say how you play how you can play Fizz. Honestly, I used to do this for a long time. I try to make it work. And honestly, it just didn't work for me. Uh is what it is. You could try it. See how it's like. Comment below your experiences. Comment your theories in paragraphs. You guys love to do that. The Fizz community is crazy. And now time to talk about the last build. And it's a variation to Hextech Proto Belts, which is Night Harvest. Night Harvest is really good if you're not looking for like any movement speed engage. You don't need to engage, just deal a lot, tons of damage. And well, I mean, it gives you movement speed after you damage them, which is pretty cool. Night Harvester, Hextech Rocket Belt, either one works. Personally for me, the, the deal breaker for me why I go Hextech Proto Belts is because Mythic Passives grants all legendary items five ability haste. I play Fizz more for damage oriented side of things. And well, Night Harvest, if CDR, which is good, but again, Proto Belt will probably deal a little bit more damage ish. Well, scaly wise with magic penetration, and then yeah, Night Harvest as an item compared to the numbers of Proto Belt with WQ, Night Harvest wins. Yeah, but experiment with how you like. Oh man, I think that's it. All right, so how you want to play the early game on. Fizz. Now, these replays are going to be my replays from High Diamond. Now, this lane, many people say it's a counter pick. Honestly, Diana is kind of a just not too good of a champion because she pushes. Okay, it's again, you have to know a lot to play at like high, high type levels, but to know her champion identity ish or know what she tries to do, which is poke you out and then engage, out trade you with W, Q. And she also takes Conquer, which helps her in extended trades, right? So, just get shoved in. Diana, her passive makes her auto shove, so it is what it is. On Fizz lanes, no matter what, 99 times out of 100, they're just going to shove you in under tower. Respect that. Don't get chipped out too much because you want to actually have level 2, level 3, level 2, level 3 threats when the times present themselves. Dodge abilities whenever they toss it to try to go for mini trades. Maybe that can be in your favor. E over it. The Diana Q, whatever that may be. R R E Q E, maybe. Pop down on them. Auto W reset for the electrocute. Play things slow, but try to find moments where you could go from 100 to 0. Maybe not in moments where they have minion waves where. They could fight you if you try to go for an extended trade. Know when she has level lead, like two level three. Try not to assert yourself too dominant there. And once you hit level three, this is where most of the time you can actually look to out trade them, make them back, find a good backing spot. And like I said, most of the time you're just going to be farming under tower. That was kind of a greed E is what it is. But yeah, you're going to get pushed under tower. You're going to farm with your W. And if you miss your W, you're probably going to miss 3 CS. So don't miss your W, right? Okay. Now, at this point, you want to be thinking junglers are fighting over... Okay, okay. I have to pause this. Now, in the early game, Fizz is very, very, very good at these 2v2 situations. You know around what time, generally speaking, 3 minutes 30, I think... Three minutes, 10 seconds when the scuttle crab spawns, give or take. You want to have the wave manipulated where it's not crashed under your tower. If the laner you're playing against knows this, this is high, high level. I, I don't expect any laner to do this below Diamond 4 where it's, it's going to be where most of you guys are, right? If you know this tip, you can win most early games. 
have the wave either in the middle or shoved under their tower if you can somehow do that early game but knowing when they're fighting over scuttle is key olaf Fizz versus hecarim diana i mean it's just common sense you gotta go for the fight if you farm minions and greed i don't care miss the cannon you will fight for this scuttle crab if you don't your junglers will rage fall behind and leave the game literally it just maps out perfectly i mean it gives you lead gives you prio and i mean that's how you start snowballs early on and look with that we have double buffs i stay a little bit longer knowing that i have double buffs i was thinking i could pressure a tire dive but i didn't have flash or ignite so it's not like i could do that knowing that diana stars w honestly i was waiting for the next cannon wave this isn't really important but that's how you want to play the early game kind of more on the passive side of things especially into a lane like diana where she's actually pretty good early on against fizz yeah and then uh things go on we reset what do we get dark seal and alternator knowing that it was kind of an awkward spot to back and okay so this is more for like gold-ish elo plus if you want to get really good leads know when to back which the best time to back is going to be when the cannon wave is right here knowing that you'll miss no cs under tower and it puts them in an awkward spot knowing that when they come back to lane you can clear a wave or two and then they're gonna lose maybe six minions under tower that short minion lead can lead to level leads could lead to gold leads to could lead to item leads kill leads roam leads it shows momentum and you could really you know gain leads from that that's, that's all i'm trying to say so <laughs> back back times are very important they will yeah of course get you cs leads and uh yeah when you have really good back timings what will happen most of the time is it shoves and guess what this gives you time to ward and roam if the opportunities present themselves i don't think it presents itself in this situation so we're kind of playing it out diana naturally shoves we don't want to just stay in this awkward spot no okay so identify in the early game what you want to accomplish we have shark we could solo kill diana if need be olaf of course beats hecarim early on and uh roaming bots is kind of risky knowing that we don't want to lose two tower platings and literally get diana back into the game risking roams risky roams can be both rewarding but risky if they don't go well and you lose two tower platings and two waves that play alone can literally lose you the laning phase not saying i want you to play 100 for lane because roaming means a lot on fizz but Again, it's probably going to be through cannon wave setup. It crashes, and at most, you're going to lose three minions under tower, and hopefully, you'll get a kill to make up for it. But XP, gold, XP and gold mean a lot. From the minions, you're going to lose, and the tower platings they're going to take, especially if they're playing a champion like Diana, Zed, so forth, right? You just don't want them to get a lead by just staying in lane. Like, I know you if you want to roam it's going to be through cannon win uh cannon minion waves that's all i'm trying to say means a lot unless it's going to be 2v2 fights between junglers and mids then you want to leave off lane it doesn't matter if you lose a cs or two just play for it and then oh yeah basically this is uh what's called this is a high diamond but of course it works in basically all ranks play to the fact that they have no vision you're controlling river and it's fog of war step into this bush what does diana think we're doing roaming bots what do we do we note that missing ping as you saw right there we're on the replay drop the shark 100 to 0 her a counter pick lane what happens next we get a kill she's down how much gold oh man i wish i could check this is there a way i could check this on replay she's down what is it now at this point probably like 700 gold ish loses a wave under tower that's a cannon wave what do we do we recall knowing that we're not going to lose anything and yeah that's how you play the early games through vision control and uh 2v2 skirmishes stuff like that right waves in a really good spot we could zone most of the time diana will just throw cues from a long distance we don't want that that slows us down if she just farms with her q I mean, sure, Diana will just have a weaker mid game than us, but we want to push the pace of the game. We're setting up drag. We're clearing vision, looking for the next pick opportunity. Go for a really good trade on Diana. E, 
Okay, that was kind of awkward. Did not expect to get ganked. And we die, we land the shark, we trade one for one. Probably not worth knowing that we gave shutdown gold. But again, ideally, we were playing for drag. Olaf gets the Diana. Things pan out all right, but it's like, eh, could have been better if I just played it better and didn't uh, get caught there. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. Drag fights. All objective leads. If you can get them, get them. Olaf fights for drag. Where did the HP go? I wish we could see the HP. I think she, he... Oh, man. Awkward. I think I remember what happens. Oh, yeah. This, <laughs> this is the game. Olaf was flaming Zaya for having heal and then Galio for having R. But basically, you just want to play for drag fights. I mean... Kind of greedy, knowing that Olaf should have waited a little bit until I spawned. I could have shown and so forth, but... Autoing whoever is the most important target, which in that situation is Hecarim, knowing that he could smite drag. And then after that, playing for Ash. Flashes, cool, cool, cool. And then playing for... What, what's it called? Objective fights. Yeah, it's key. We lost first drag, which not a good example. But, uh... That first drag. We got one drag, they got one. And what's it called? Can I check Rift Herald? Oh, I'm so bad with this replay feature, man. Kill top. Us. Okay, so us roaming top wouldn't mean a lot. We roam top. What happens is, let's say we kill Set. What can Kale do to snowball that lead? Not really anything. She's a farm reliant champion. If she stays even in lane, that's basically a win. And the goal is just for her to not get stomped. Olaf places Rift mid knowing that mid. Getting tower playings means the most. They get snowball at elsewhere. What do we do? Of course, we ate our jungler whenever possible. And you have to know when you have a lead, when to take it from 100 to zero. We know Diana has no stopwatch. She just used it. She's coming into lane. We have level lead. Oh man, how to push and push and push leads. Gotta love to see it. We have level lead. We have item lead. She has no stopwatch. Tower Diver, what are you doing? Literally, like there's opportunities like this that present themselves. I even have the habit of not going for plays that are just obvious, but I just don't know. So after we take two, I mean, <laughs> Diana knows this is GG well played by now. You push that. And at this point, I mean, I feel like we could have called that the mid game a little bit, but yeah, uh, Olaf was at blue. So we knew when blue spawned, we take the blue, we back. And now I want to say this is the mid game where side laning and going for picks is ideal yep please tell me we do everything right post vod review i could go into more detail because yeah thought process is key and i kind of suck when i'm playing the game at the same time but uh post i want to say 10 minutes but this game is 15 you want your mid your bot lane to go mid because you can't farm mid against their bot right and you want to look for picks or go bot lane so what are we looking for ash drop the shark E okay 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 that one okay okay we wanted to go for a combo where she couldn't counter which was R Q W okay we gap close away we just try to E away right escape just combo there but yeah looking for picks right sets uh I think Papega is it right Papega is it this is kind of risky on my part but side is really important 123 versus 95 CS we can extend this from side laning because you know uh what's called we beat her in the 1v1 right but said is actually kind of fed he could beat me i should know that but i just don't i flash his w that does a lot of damage now i knowing that he doesn't have w i try to go for fight and i e double e and it was kind of close but i kind of knew my numbers a little bit more and then we we're able to get him at that point the fed person ish kind of goes down and we're backing we get zonius now it makes our survivability just that much better and what are we doing we're Okay. Mid game, right? I don't know why. I mean, okay, okay, I know why because I was literally at this stage at one point. But it's I make this mistake too. But it's if you know drag is spawning. I wish I could check the seconds, but we see it's thirty seconds because the yellow on the map. If you know drag is spawning, don't split top. If you know rift is up. Don't go bot if you have lead and everyone's fighting for Rift. Always be where the fights are because you have gold advantage. You are the team's carrier, okay? So, drag fights prevent, 
per, per, presents itself. And what do we do? I think we play this fight like shit. Wait, no, 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 we don't, we don't, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, team fighting, team fighting, team fighting. Hopefully, hopefully we do this right. We're fighting for drag. Ideally, we want to come from a flank. If we came right here, it would be a lot better. But we don't want to land the shark on set. That's the worst thing in the world. We go for the most important target, which is Misfortune and Ash. We end up actually doing that, even though we landed the shark on set. Flanking is key. If we could have... Oh, I wish I did this. If we could have flanked around here, that would have gave us a huge opening onto Ash, Misfortune, Diana. But we don't, so it is what it is. We land the shark on set. My error, right? We E onto the Ash, and then we go in onto the Misfortune after she R's, and we zone us. That way they can't kill us, get triumphed, and team focus them down. As you see, when we zone us, what happens is... They all collapse on us. They're wasting time. Because look. They just couldn't auto anyone. That was important in our front lines there. So now our, our bot lane, like I said, in our uh, combos guide, destroys them. So after that, that equals drag. And uh, I think it's a pretty good lead, right? They think they have a chance. We just shove this in. Just for extra CS. And uh, we take one Krug and then recall. We were trying to back for Magi's. Knowing that this was a very snowball -y game. We have 10 stacks, right? I think we get it, right? Yeah, we get the Magi's. And next play is around, I think that's Baron. Pretty good. We go mid, clear it. And what do we do? We're trying to look for a pick on Ash, which is kind of greed. Knowing that we could just go bot. What, what happens? Oh, okay, okay. So basically, you know, we have Rift. Olaf pinged it, so we're grouping mid, and then, uh, try to take mid tower, it's kind of an awkward fight, we immediately gap close onto Misfortune, we're under tower, we Zonia's, guess what happens when the Zonia runs out, our E is back up, who are we going for, we're going for Ash, most important target, target prioritization, if you don't do it right, I mean, you're just not going to utilize your lead properly, if you're focusing the tank, all your damage is just going down the drain because it's just it's not it's not good it's not good i mean if you fully combo a tank and it deals half his hp you're completely wasted you're, you're useless that is the last thing you want to do always prioritize whoever's the most fed we take inhib what, what happens is i think i take blue and then recall we take blue it resets <laughs> because we're bad at this game and then uh da, 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 we get needless one of the games where I get Needless, I have enough gold, but Lich Bane also works. Lich Bane is really good into comps that are really squishy, like this game kind of. We can get three out of four, uh, three out of five really well, so Lich Bane will help a lot in burst. Death Cap is more for like just raw AP, I guess, but the Lich Bane Sheen active is more for um, squishies. So as we see, uh, Diana has Zonius, but we still go for it. If we could burn the, the Zonius, great. If we don't, whatever. Double E, because we thought she was going to be there. But yeah, it was just a little pick, a little pick. Getting picks, of course, really important mid-game. After we get the pick, what happens is you look for the next objective. What is it? It's Baron. We take Baron. And then uh, after this, I think what happens is one more team fight and then GG. Side laning top, not going mid. There's no inhib. There's nothing to fight for mid. We go top. We try to set that Q up so that we, we could QR, but I don't I think the minions kill it. And she just backs away. Right? Uh she's eating us for the Leandries. We back one last time. We almost have enough for Rabidons, but kinda sucky. You want to hold on to your corrupting potion up until late, late, late game where it's necessary, I guess. Because if you don't have uh Corrupting, since the mana nerfs took place, you are going to put yourself more at risk of going oom um and then being useless rather than you just, I don't know, just giving away 60 AP, just a little AP. So we play this out. We're grouping mid. I think someone splits top and bot. Yep. Pinging for it. I ping top. We can't just AFK group in mid. We get a pick on the Hecarim. That was kind of like a, I mean, he, <laughs> this, this guy's dying to minions. We rocket belt, flash forward. It's all right because one kill means we could push really hard. So we're pushing bot. Cool. 
Let's ignore that shark. <laughs> Let's ignore that shark indeed. Um, we E. Our ideal goal is to go for misfortune. She flashes under fountain. Cool, cool, cool. She's out of the fight. Useless. What happens next is we go for Ash. E on top of her. Plops. And uh, yeah. GG well played. That is going to be how to play Fizz from early to late game into a counter pick lane in many people's eyes. So, and yeah. That's going to be a VOD review number one. Catch you on the next one. All right. So, we're in uh, VOD review number two playing against Valkos. Now, what's got high requests is how to play against ranged matchups so i guess in this lane we're gonna do mouth uh against Velkos, right so how sh the Velkos wants to play it out is just i guess shove me in early that that was kind of Velkos's theory behind that i actually purposely get autoed so my minion wave autos the Velkos, that way it pushes in quicker and look how far away i'm stepping away from Velkos. respect the damage know that if you get poked out pre-level three then you basically just give him the lane i mean he can control he can poke he could e he could stun he could do whatever so just trying to get shoved in and hit level two maybe you could start going for traits i don't even think i do that i need my level three right we'll just play this out yeah do 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 lilia ease mid that's whatever <laughs> as long as it didn't shove my wave Cool, cool, cool. And you have to know that 2v2s, when they have mages, are going to be so weak early game. Lilia and me versus the Nunu Velkos, we will most definitely win that. So we're just trying to farm the wave under tower, right? We hit level three, took tears first. And then now, I mean, I guess we could start stepping up, but the problem is when you're actually playing against skilled Velkos players, what they'll do is, yeah, okay, see, we go for a main trade. Um, what we do there, is we Q auto W just for the electrocute, right? Is they'll stand very far back. You try to engage, you engage just with the Q, and then look, they have proper position where they're close to the tower. They get EU, they could retaliate so so much back and you can't do anything. Or they'll just stand at a really far distance where they hit you with Qs, hit you with Qs if you try to go for them. So, and in that situation where you're not ahead enough to just one shot burst them with your R, uh, Okay, that'll, that'll, that'll be for later discussion. But you want to set up times where cannon is showing and then you're going to be setting up for pressure. Whether that's in the jungle, you want to look for a roam, ward, deep ward, or set up counter jungle with your jungle and so forth. But, um, yeah, let's play this out. Like I said, what are we playing for? The 2v2s. Woo! Just like last time. Um, I don't think much comes from this. Much comes from it, but we just showed, which is cool. Lilia said, I want to, oh, I don't even think that's double scuttle. We just take another scuttle. What do we do? We show here. New, new recalls. We get a deep ward to see if he shows there. Hit the sweeper. Mid is Mia. We just warded. So, yeah. We have the upper hand. We have resource advantage. We're trying to go for aggressive fights. And like I said, if Valkos is in this zone, I mean, he, he has full control. But we could say, do we have tower dive potential? Yes, we do. We have ignite. We have flash. We could play really close with numbers. And know that in some lanes like these, it's going to be ideal to actually look for tire dive threat. And since Velkos is out of mana, once they're back, we're just trying to shove, it in, uh, shove him in. When it's not a cannon wave, so that way we have CS advantage. And you know what? This is this is fine. I mean, we try to make the best with what we could, but respectable, respectable. Now we could really amp up the aggression, though. Dark Seal, amplifying tone boots, head back to lane. Trying to play off Lolia again, if we can keeping a note on that but when it comes to solo lane let's focus on this we shoved under tower and when you reset the wave will be bouncing back to you Velkos uses e we could play on the aggressive side of things right lilia's top counter jungling nunu's add drag and we're getting shoved under tower we want to be looking for an ultimate play but we don't know where nunu is so we really can't since Velkos doesn't have stopwatch, we could do that, right? Don't worry, they'll they picks up uh, a little bit later here. But yeah, play for the two v twos. Lilia gets the Nunu, cool, cool. And then, yep, Lilia gets a nice that off, R off, and we're able to secure the Velkos. Shove the Velkos in. I think I take a tower plating and then back, or do I just back? 
Unless I need an item, I don't really need to take a tower plating, right? I trolled this. I remember. Wait, wait, no, I don't, I don't. I don't. I'm thinking about a different, uh, right? A different one? Nope. <laughs> I kind of troll a little bit. And then I recall here. But, I mean, I got a tower plating. I'm pretty sure I could back for Hexic Alternator, right? That's what I was going for. Yep. And early on, from levels 1 to 3, don't get poked out. That's literally the goal. Just to get shoved under tower and then have opportunities present themselves later on. Lilia goes for a counter jungle, which is really good. And then afterwards, Garen shows. We play for the Lilia. Playing for your jungler is very, 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 very important on Fizz. Setting up wave manipulation to make the wave either in the middle. Either in the middle of the lane or... Oh, yeah, we popped a shark, but it comes short, which is uh, unfortunate. Yep. Lilia waits for us. We get the kill on the Velkos. One trick Velkos. They present opportunity for you, your junglers. Well, depends. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I know there are going to be some terrible junglers that literally troll and go for terrible things, but I, I, I guess gold plus? I don't know. There's no specific rank knowing that all junglers can be bad junglers, right? But yeah, I'm paying for Rift. Lilia said she wants to back get her Leandre's tur uh, tournament and then Merc Shred's cool. That's fine. We just go for a back. It shoves under tower and uh, it's a cannon wave. So we're not going to lose much if we come back to lane. We come back to lane and lose maybe two minions. All right, so look, Velkos is now just staying back, being annoying. We have no R, so it's not like we could tower dive, right? What do we do? Our R is up soon, though. We try to set something up. I think we just shove this in and then start warding, right? Start warding, vision ward, clear that ward. We go back mid. And uh, we actually get ganked, which is really unfortunate. Did not expect that. Lilia kind of pops off a little bit. But is what it is. Unfortunate we get roamed on. We try to place deep wards. That way that wouldn't happen. Let's come back to lane. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. I even show the bad parts. Well, look, we're up uh, 30 CS. Because we have been zoning the Velkos. Velkos has only been able to use abilities to get farm. And... Uh, Look, we're taking tower platings mid. What is this? Level 9 to level 8. And I think this is where the opportunity presents himself. Yep, it is. Knowing when to go in. Is it? Yep, it is. Could be. I lied. Am I in the right bit? Water review? Yeah, God. <laughs> I knew it all along. Let's replay that back. Let's replay that back. Okay, so... Knowing when to go in, identify the situation. Velkos has no summoner spells, no way to dodge my R. You have to know when to take it from zero to 100. We're up CS, we're up items. We have burst to 100 to zero her. Our ignite is up, right? What do we do? I think we Q animation cancel R, right? Q animation cancel R. We go E, so it, it dodges Velkos E, auto W for the reset and auto and we get a kill. Starting a solo lead, and I mean, yeah, at mid game is where you could just take it from 100 to zero all the time. And then I buy Hextech Rocket Belt, which makes my gap closer that much better. And Velkos roams bot. What do we do? We don't roam bot because that play is long gone. If that play is long gone, done. Take tower planes, take towers. Oh my, I'm just a beast. I'm just a beast. No, I'm just kidding. But no, 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 again, again, lesson of uh, taking things from 100 to zero. That's why Fizz is just notorious for once he gets a lead, you can't stop him. But in low elo, what tends to happen is they just throw their lead randomly. If you have thought process behind every play you do, and I, I guess know your numbers, which comes down to playing a lot of games of Fizz, and when you could tire dive people or not, then you're going to be able to uh, get really good with numbers, tire dive, and so forth. So do we have R? We don't even have R! We don't even have R, and we tower dive. You know why we have Hextech Rocket Belt dealing extra 200 damage. We know it gives movement speed. We know Velkos does not have flash. Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> Velkos used the flash. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Velkos had flash, but ideally we just wanted to go for a really good trade. I did not think it was going to be a kill in this situation, but we, we, we get the kill. 
Taking things from zero to 100 is key, right? We take first tower. What does this equal? We get probably like a thousand some gold. We get codex instead of a seeker's arm guard because we know we know we're, we're snowballing. We want we want the CDR. We don't really need it for the armor. We're not playing against Zed and so forth. And what happens is we go to resources. Where's resources? Bot lane. We're side laning. Don't AFK go mid because then your Lulu, your Kogma, your Lilia, all of them will take your XP. You have no real source of wave clear that's, you know, like really easy to do like Orianna, uh, Zerath. So you're not going to collect any of the wave. You need the resources. Go into the side lane. Try to look for picks. The ping, where, where, where's Fizz? And playing for Fog of War. If you could play for Fog of War properly. That, okay, so basically how I whenever i do make an account because i always do this just to see why people might be hard stuck and so that way i can make more detailed guides like this why people okay this is i i guess not why people are hard stuck because that could be a lot of things but a really good tip is if you get ahead every game if you know you snowball every game the best way to push your lead is make sure you take sweeper they have fog of war uh what's it called they have no vision right you sweeped it and then play off picks in the jungle any rank below i mean plat four yeah i'd say plat four you could probably with this tip get so many kills get so many solo kills get so many objectives find yourself just being everywhere on the map them not knowing when to fear and get a lead so far ahead where they have to distance themselves like this that's how far you get get yourself ahead and literally I've well if it's not Smurfs Q and it's just like an average game in silver or bronze. I think I've escaped with like 100% win rate bronze and then it was like 95% silver. I lost one game, right? So something along the lines of that. But that that this is like the number one tip. It's it's uh looking for fog of war place where they have no vision and then you just engage. Do I get a kill here? I don't think I do. Do I? I just wave clear this. I don't look for more. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Mages, what are what's one thing they're they're good at? Poking from far away distances. What's bad what one thing they're bad at? Identifying that all ranged matchups you're going to be in. They're bad at long or people with gap closures. They get to them, they deal melee damage, and yeah. We pro about forward, we get the movement speed. That's why I like pro about the engage you get is just you can't compete. Well, in my opinion, Night Harvest, it's most of the time. You, if, if your team has heavy, heavy engage, maybe you want to think about Night Harvest. But Proto Belt, uh, really good. We get a kill. Just sweep a little. And then afterwards, I'm guessing we back. Or, yeah, okay. we Yeah, we back. Before our team ints it mid. Because that's what players like to do throw. We get a back off. And then they're going drag. Ideally, we just want to let go of this play knowing that it's it's gone i mean our team kind of just entered it lilia's dead but uh number one way they throw leads in low elo by going for plays where they're lost just literally backing away pinging away but what do i do i go along with them and i think i int but it's fine no i don't int but it's just not a good play Izonia's and i flash over this wall but it's just wasted potential Wasted momentum of our lead. We have to get drag, just knowing that Lilia into it early on. But nope, Lilia spawns. Now we could take drag, and then they can't contest because Lilia is like our win condition in a way. And then again, yeah, I don't think I was in there, but playing for picks is key. I think yeah, we cleared mid. They have no vision, knowing that they can't just go into their jungle or else they die. It's going to be a major pro. We get the Samir. Clear mid. And this is again just kind of mid game. We are. That's kind of a zoning R. There's two ways you could R. You could either R to delete squishies or zoning R so that way they can't go away. Just kidding. I wanted to get the new new. But zoning R is still not too bad of an R. Just participating in every small fight there is in the game. And then uh, I think we. I'm close to closing it out. Nah. We recall. Oh, we don't get Magi's yet. The reason why is because uh, 
This item alone gives you 65 AP if you don't upgrade it. That's so much return on just an item that costs 350 gold. So if you just get raw AP on top of it, I mean, you're not losing much. I'm pretty sure it will give you like, well, maybe like extra 10 AP, but it's not worth it. Buying Magi's when you have items to buy. It's only good if you can buy it like straight up. Even then, you could probably buy Needleless and that's, that'll be better. We have double buffs. We go for Baron. We go for Baron knowing that we have a lead. And then here comes the team fight. Our goal, Velkaz, Samir. That's basically who we're trying to go for. We are Thrash because, well, positioning. Yeah. It's kind of awkward. We didn't come from a flank. We Zonius right after we use, okay. Right after we use our abilities. And now I guess we can break down the fight. We're going Baron, they want to stop it. I ping them off, my team off. We came from a flank, that would be better, but we toss out the shark just sometimes getting your shark off, not on the marksman, but in an area they're trying to walk to. They're trying to stop our team from going Baron. We see Garen's engaging on our team, just landing it on the Thresh sometimes, not all the time, is the best move. Since they can't collapse on our team, it's just kind of like a zoning shark in a way. We don't focus the Thresh though. Velkaz ours, they all try to use their CC towards us. We E to where their back line is. We don't E here, we E here. We plop down. We focus Velkaz. Velkaz is R-ing, which is uh, damaging most of my team, right? And what do we do right after? We're out of abilities. We protobelts. We hit them all. 123, 5 damage. Right after, we're out, we're out of abilities. We have no cooldowns up. If you have no Zonius, you're dead, but we Zonius. They can't kill us. They don't get Triumph. And right after it ends, I'm pretty sure our E is back up. Samir flashes away. Maybe that's too slow. And then, okay, we just get the Nunu. But uh, that's basically how you want to play team fights. To get to their backline. But also knowing moments where your R, landing it on a tank, just does so much in providing how they walk and so forth. Like. They have to walk here. They can't walk here. They have to walk here. And then you can just collapse on them. So much mobility, so much gap closing. I mean, it's very hard to play against a Fed Fizz. So we win that. I'm pretty sure we just finished Baron up and then uh, we clear this back. Pretty sure right now we get Magi's. Not, yeah, yeah. Oh no, we buy. I think we buy Lich Bane. I just backed, right? Oh yeah, I did. Okay, I backed and then I get Lich Bane. I start to head a bot, clear wolves. One thing that some people don't do enough is when camps are up, just take them. I mean, your jungler isn't gonna have enough time to take them. If you have lead, your jungler takes the enemy's farm. Just take your own. It maximizes the amount of gold you have gained, right? So we play this out. Okay, that was kind of awkward. We try to go for. <laughs> Okay, that was just a bad play on my part. So so we try to go for Garen knowing that with this build, he's semi-squishy to us. He doesn't have too much MR to actually stop us from one-shot bursting him at that. We could probably kill him, but that doesn't work. We try to get the R on Samir, and then she just win walls it because Riot Games loves releasing 100% broken champions. But how we play this out, this is kind of awkward. Yeah. We miss our stuff. We back away, and then now we're trying to look for the engage. I think this is where the, uh, yeah, they're just zoned off. We go for the Samir. Try to get the kill there. A lot of burn. She has to burn the heal. That's fine. We have Baron minions. I think we look for the end here. Right? Or do we play for drag? Oh, yeah. There's just an awkward pick there. Awkward pick onto the Lilia, right? We try to get the Garen. I just wanted the assist. We focus the Nunu. Lilia having Zonias really did help. They can go for drag. I'm just trying to look for mid inhib, knowing that I could maybe 1v3 that, but I think I just back away in the end. Okay, that was yeah, just awkward. <laughs> kind of trolling a little bit. We take drag. We look for a back. And I'm trying to get death cap. So I take. Do I take topside? Nah. I think I'm just looking for the end here, right? 
how you want to play the mid game next proactive play like usual we side lane not just stay mid afk bot inhib is gone you always want to go to the opposite side of the map we clear this they're there we know blue buff spawns we take the blue i'm pretty sure we almost have enough for rabidons but i'm pretty sure i just uh yeah we just end the game here right we take that they're all going for us what happens mid is yeah that's basically it they take mid our team takes mid because their whole team is top we take the tower we can play aggressive we drop the shark on the garen knowing that it's going to be a pretty big r zonia so now no one kills us zonia's broken item on any assassin that can use it any mage assassin same with mage honestly take the tower and uh yeah that's gonna be how to play against ranged matchups and also how to team fight all right so we are in a game of low ish elo i mean it's high silver where i ideally wanted to make a video where most people oh my it definitely is high silver huh where most people are stuck in right now this account i did not buy an account okay i hand leveled this account i actually wanted it to get to diamond with high mmr so that way when the season starts i could just like fast rock into master tier i got stuck in smurfs queue this account has a 37 percent win rate because i, I at the point i had like 50 percent in smurfs queue i just had really unlucky afk player games so i just played it with friends so i mean it, yeah it's uh silver two silver one mmr so let's see exactly what this is all about and exactly how you can carry it because i'll be trying to point out every mistake and so forth so i mean seraphine isn't playing this lane too poorly just shoves it in that's fine and most of the time like i said in uh the vod reviews before you just want the weight to be right here most of the time let her shove it in she'll hit level two first just don't get poked out too much and if you really want you can stand right here if they're playing more on the aggressive side of things they auto you your wave starts to focus them the wave shoves quicker to you and uh yeah you're chilling right so yeah it's cool it's cool just bring the wave here should hit level two soon we hit level two and seraphine's shield's actually pretty killer what do we identify she doesn't have resolve she doesn't have uh exhaust she took tp uh, i messed up so the wave is pretty big as soon as we thin this out a little bit we could look for a trade the shield is, is killer that's one thing i noticed uh they buffed her damage mid right i think it was that but the shield is absolutely massive right didn't even hit level three huh okay kind of greed it's on my part she's shoving me under tire that's pretty normal but still approachable lane using a lot of mana Level three, identifying that Hecarim might actually fight Master Yi, Master Yi. They both have Ghost. Standing in front of the wave now. What does Seraphine like to do? Just stand far back and farm, I think. Once, yeah, most of the time they will. Out of mana. Out of mana, poke this too much. We have full lane control. There's nothing she could do about it. Drop the E. Shield is, oh my, the shield is 100% broken, needs nerfs. Master Yi is mid, we see. Ping it. Uh, da -da. we might be able to look for a tower dive threat. Actually, we have ignite, we have flash, we burnt her. Uh, nope, she has two potions. She's fine, but we could pressure things for sure. I mean, it's kind of hard to get past Seraphine's shield. It's actually pretty insane. Don't want to go for tower divey type play yet. She might be here. Go for here. Yeah, do it. So we just have to escape. It's fine. Uh, Hecarim, we might be able to play this out. I have Ignite. So, yeah, he literally can't heal. He has no flash. E. Make sure we flash on the Seraphine. And there's a double kill for the Hecarim playing for Jungler. I mean, th this Seraphine isn't playing this lane half bad. I mean, low elo, I expected them to overextend and stuff. But there's just a lot of ways to get leads. If you make them yourself and here we're gonna get assumably a really good back we don't have to worry about master Yi being here maybe Lux, but yeah, okay you got me 
Is this a cannon? Not a cannon, but it's going to be very hard for Seraphine to shove it in. And I'm pretty sure it's just going to crash under a tower, uh, reset back towards me. And I doubt since it's low elo, she's going to freeze it, so we're fine. We don't get two kills, but we get two assists, which is good. And that. It's pretty good. Pretty good buys early on. 34 CS to 26 and two assist. Yeah, two assist lead. Which means that we're beating her in the aspect of amplifying tome and boots. Which is actually pretty strong, right? She still has flash. We don't have flash, so that's less kill threat. But now, we want to be playing for drag. And then maybe setting up a play bot, knowing that yeah, they are uh, feeding quite hard. Still very doable, though. Zonia's definitely be a must in these team fights it's cannon wave all right whatever we'll miss a minion we want a ward just see where they are there's a vision ward right here make up for the minion we lost and we can get the xp right i don't think she backed if she backed this bad on her part she did back go for a shark there's there's the flash and I didn't expect the flash, but oh man, that shield again, really hard to get past. We can set up uh, dive threat aggressively, or you gotta uh, observe or assess the situation. We have ignite soon. Oh, she took three potions. I lied. We can't go for dive threat, but we can set up a drag threat. Early objectives. It's not a cannon, so it's not like we could recall, but sheesh. Let's place the vision there. Master Yi's recalling. Pinging it. I have mid prio. You can do whatever you want in the jungle and I'll back you up. That's what I'm trying to say. Go like that. Good trade. Ah. Too aggressive. Gotta know when to back off. Quick trades, usually on Fizz, is best. Oh my god. Okay. There's the flash too. <clears throat> No flash, Seraphine. R and Ignite. Those are our kill threat. Okay, there's your shield. Step up. And we have the wave in a really good spot. We're about to hit level 7. Literally getting AIDS. <laughs> From the amount of CC she has. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, okay, I lied. Maybe not perfect. I, I thought, you know, that's actually not bad. I think Master Yi did not get shut down gold. He killed me first, right? Yeah, he did. Okay, it, it's not bad. Because look, we can take drag. We can literally, there's no there's no vision. Just peel off it and take drag. It's worth. Uh, Tier 2 is before Amplifying Tome. It's fine because it's crashing. We're not going to lose minions under tower. We could just go straight mid. And yep, she's shoving it inwards. Seraphine just has so much resistance. It's crazy from the shield. We're trying to make aggressive plays mid. Master Yi is showing quite often, so we need to make sure there's wards before we look. You always want, want to be warding towards what side. Uh, what side the objective's at, right? So look, see top side. Rift is up. Where do we ward? Okay, I'm going to ward right here. Because I think Master Yi will be trying to take Scuttle soon, so. Just will be good. Yep. Be in there. We know if he's coming mid. Zoner off the cannon completely. Yeah. Getting a CS lead like this. It's just far, like literally. Now this is where if your ranged laner is standing this far back. You want to be setting up proactive plays, especially on a cannon wave if you can. 2v2s. Like I said, yeah, playing for jungle. Pressure with your jungler. Because mid laners are your jungler's right hand. Looking top. Just the lean. Bot lane's too risky. Jungler's top side. Play for top side. Just in case Master Yi tries to come. Play for wherever the objectives are. I know... Maybe thinking. Ah, yeah. This guy escaped. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Oh, my Hecarim. Give me a kill. 
<laughs> Alright, there, back off, back off. Go, go, go rift though. Uh, we have two crop things, which is fine. We could actually stay this. Maybe, believe it or not, I think she didn't even use R. Did she use R? She's oom, that's the thing. Okay, see? Now she used R, we eat her R. And look, you have to assess whether or not you could go for tower dives like I'm trying to go for it now. Or just make her lose minion. Because look, we're up uh, 15 CS. Okay, and Quinn might be coming mid. That's a cannon, we could back. Rotating, rotating. It's gonna be a 3v2. It's gonna be a 3v2. Help, help, up. It's a low elo game, huh? And you have double buffs. Might be fucked. She doesn't have R. Lobby doesn't have R. Uh, okay, that was unfortunate. That was really unfortunate. They get rift. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Let's get tier twos. Vision Ward, knock. You don't usually, unless if you want to get sweeper, you don't want to get sweeper. Honestly, I don't even want to see their ping. Well, okay, <laughs> maybe for communications, but uh, you want to get sweeper whenever you're side laning, so that way you could look in the jungle style plays, right? But we're up level kills and all the above. Oh, nice, nice flash actually. We could have went for kill threat there. Gotta know when to take it from 100 to 0. When you have lead, they have no uh, stopwatch and so forth. Go for it. We have Ignite, so stop Seraphine's healing. Miss Sona 2.0. As long as bot stays semi-even in farm, should be fine. We get drag, which is for scaling, and that's good for us. We have tier 2, so we could actually chase her. Might be getting ganked. Rift bot. I don't want to have to use both sums, but we just had kill threat there, and then I just want to push my lead. So yeah, we get that. And then once we have extreme gold lead, then we can look to actually just one-shot burst uh, Lux and Samir. Awkward. Oh, I shouldn't have placed it there. It's fine. We want to build a proto belt. As soon as possible. TP mid. We're up CS. That's fine. These Pearl Belt gives us gap closer, extra damage, and then roaming becomes a lot easier. So, yeah. Up 15 CS. Uh, got a tower plating on me. That sucks. No flash mid, which means we could play hyper aggressive. We have tier twos. We should be able to chase this down. Yep. And look at the damage. Now we could take it from 100 to zero all the time. Whenever she shows two levels on her, item lead, all that lead. The little leads we've built early built up into this massive snowball we have now. When clears mid, we can go drag. They're at an item disadvantage, and bot has prio. Identifying. Oh, we could go drag. Oh, Master E is here. Looking here. Go, go, go. Okay, you shouldn't you shouldn't be going that way. Killing the Quinn because that's hugest threat to uh Yeah, it's literally just hugest threat. Yeah, we can't. I don't know what made her so foul. Oh, it's probably this. But Quinn was hugest threat to disrupting that Baron uh drag play. We neutralize that, and then again, we're playing for objective lead. We have oh, so many two levels on Seraphine, and this is actually a I want to say more favorable matchup for her instead of the Fizz, knowing that she has shield. Just a lot of great ways around uh, dealing with my damage if she plays safe and then she outskills. So, I mean. It's a pretty good pick. I mean, I I pick Fizz into Seraphine, so. Is what it is. If I have Shark, I'm going for kill. Let's see, Rift is up soon. We can place Vision Ward right here. Oh, top side. That's fine. 
shoving cannon. I mean, it's proper time for Seraphine to roam because, yeah, it's cannon, but you lose out on a couple. Probably pathing all the way around the tower plating. And it's a cannon. We don't know if Master Yi's there, so we don't know if we should play aggressive or not. Now is the perfect time to roam. It's a cannon. It's crashing. We have plenty of time where we're not losing minions. Master Yi show top, which means that, I mean, there's no one that can stop us. We're ahead. We're snowballing. And this is how to translate a lead 101. Do not R the Samir. There we go. Because she could just uh, wind wall it. We get bought. Rotate our lead bot. We lose basically nothing. And we get the gold from bot tower, which makes up for that. But the only part, which is kind of sucky, is uh, XP. Seraphine can actually come back and XP. Stop, stop the minions from attacking me. Oh my god. I get that. I literally helped you. And look, got our back, our, our bot lane pretty ahead here. They got tower and stuff. Ping, I'm coming bot. You guys go mid. I mean, it's low elo. I'm getting mad guys. <laughs> you want to start building towards uh, Zonia's now, but I'm just getting mad guys. I don't think I'll be dying anytime soon. And it's a kill. It's a kill fest in uh, low elo, right? So, I mean, their mechanics aren't even that bad, if I'm being honest. I. <laughs> You might be flaming me for saying that, but as you saw in the laning phase, I mean, there are ways I edge out them every game in comparison, but like they have the structures and details down. Seraphine's never, yeah, you just never. And and we have an assassin that's not on the mini map. Oh my God, a God. That's just called pick 101. Like I said, there's always gonna be moments where there's always picks, whether that's in the jungle or in the side lanes. They just don't respect the fact that there's a fed fizz. More magi stacks, more one-shot potential. And then, I don't know, Zonius is good, but this game I'm feeling like going Lich Bane. Translating lead, notice we're not mid, where are we? We're bot, side laning. Quinn showed on the map for like 0.5 seconds. I saw that with my keen vision. So we're watching for her. Okay. Oh, Gary. Can get this. Okay, here. I don't know. You both are trolling. Can't. You can't. Ah! Yeah, I'm trolling. Oh, tro my bad, my bad, my bad, team. I'm just gonna go Lich. Forget this. I'm going Lich Bane because like Zonia is just I I'm I have one I have one shot potential. Me side laning means a lot. Take Rift. Don't go mid, just AFK mid like this. This is not good. They should be looking for Rift. They're not gonna listen to my pings most likely. Because Rift probably means more than drag. Rift pushes leads, takes towers, takes gold leads. Drag is more for like the scaly late game, but we could take both. It's not that big of a deal. Just, you, got, you have to remind Silver to, I'm mean, honestly, I, all ranks up to like D2. To just take objectives that are obvious to take. Because they'll listen as long as you're ahead. They semi know the right call, right? Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Not this again. Oh, not this again. The thing is, we literally have leads. There's no reason to lose. There's no reason to lose these fights. Okay, now we're going to play for drag. Let them take rift. We'll, we'll take drag. We have to take drag. And then look for like a scaly late game. Ish. Oh, they're taking drag. Wait, wait. No, they're not. Okay, let's go this. Oh, boy. They are. Path here. Path here. Path here. Yep. Nice. Uh, Quinn is showing, so we can't show here. Oh, shit. The R, I try to R, so that way... Try to look here. What? Lux's Q range is quite absurd. 
Okay, okay, okay. Enough playing around. I <laughs> did not expect things to go like this. Oh, being such a pain. Just take the drag. There's, it's worded, but yeah, just take drag, take drag. We got it. We got it. There's no way they can test. Yep. We could take that. We almost have enough for Lich. Stacking drags. I went over the early game pretty well. I mean, there's... Okay, two mess ups. Two mess ups. It's the first game of the day. Season 11 is about to come out, and I wanted to make a guide, all right? Look here. Look here. Look here. Look here! Oh, my God. I literally pinged it, too. There we go. Knew that the R was going to kill Samir, so what do we do next? We um, ulted. Uh, or we eat onto the other opponent. Now we clear this. I wish I could have gone that way, but it's fine. We have enough for Lich. Side landing, again, is very important. They group in mid. They have to send like three bot. And then actually taking the enemy's jungle in. It's right there. It's not done enough. And it just maximizes the amount of XP and denies them a lot. So just do it. Wave crash there. Mm. Alright. Let's recall. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know just with statistics alone. A lot of people are low elo. Um, some a little bit lower than others. I wanted to add flair to maybe resemble some of the games you guys might play and so forth. So yeah, this is basically how to play this out, ping him back, because you know, they're all alive and he's alone. Um, yeah, we just want to side lane. You got MR. That's actually pretty good. We could go for the 100 to zero. Yep. Even with MR, it's not enough. Not that we're, not not when we are this fed. And then one thing I've noticed, especially in silver, is uh, yep, e e ah, oh, close, close, close. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's really good. Dead, dead. <laughs> All right, we're good. I think we're good here. Look for tower dive, honestly. Tower dive this guy. Yeah, when you're really fed on fizz, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Dive everyone. It's getting the lead that's usually the hard part. But maintaining the lead can also be a hard part. It just depends on the player. Me getting the lead, at least like in original ranks, is harder than maintaining lead. Because I've been playing so much league. I mean, it's just self-explanatory what to do next. But getting the lead, knowing matchups, is better as you keep playing, right? And now we're side laning. Kill them, kill that. Lowey's out farming Quinn, which should never happen. Oh, missed that. Ah, fall back. There we go. Nice. Really good. Okay, let's peel out. She's not going for me. She's, she's, ah, she, she's lost her mind as she has. Yeah, Quinn. When I, that's my bad. Not my bad. I missed the R. That's why. But I know some people are lower MMR with like bronze and stuff. I don't want to play in bronze because that's I mean, well, like at that point, I don't know. That's like too low for, for like me to be playing in, right? Because it's not going to be like a good example for like the majority majority. I try to pick the middle ground between like mid elo and low elo. Gold, silver 2 is like the way I figured it to be the best, right? Oh, I got Zonius. Uh, you meant to get Rabidons. But you know what? Zonius is fine. I usually just get Zonius every game, though. For the most part, right? So it's a uh, habit, I guess. Oh, okay. hey there. Hey there. We have a vision. <laughs> what goes on? What goes on is... Y'all don't know. We had vision this whole time. Okay. Get Zonius. Get you. 
E on top of you, and Zonia's actually came in clutch. Quadra kill. Yeah. The mid game is just a wreck. You can consistently get leads mid game on I'm being honest on Fizz. Same with early, get minor leads consistently, I guess. But no, the mid game is where I just I thrive when it comes to silver elo. Now we can take Baron, that's good. Honestly. Yeah, take Baron, Soul. They don't forfeit knowing that they care about their rank, which is pretty interesting. I expected people to have way worse mental. But one thing I've noticed is CS scores usually are really bad in silver post 10 minutes. Like, I'm surprised I'm only up this much. I mean, I have the most in the game, but usually it's going to be way, way, way high. higher. They get like 120, like the, like the Samir, yep. Okay, let's take this. Is my volume too high? Nah, it's good, it's good. Okay. Now we can build Rabidon's last item. Whatever, we'll get Elixir. We're closing out this game. And then, uh... Yeah. Try hard. That's what I like. When they don't FF! It brings me hope. She guess Quinn is ahead, right? I think. Let's look for a pick, like usual. I It'd probably be better if I had sweeper for pick potential, but it is what it is. Look to shove, just anything. We could look for the Lux, no joke. Our protobug gives us so much mobility. We can just do that in their own base. Okay. Right? I got exhausted, which is why the auto didn't kill. Yeah, feels bad. But yeah, like usual, guys. Uh, it's not really a gameplay, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Find it helpful. Make sure to smash the like, comment, subscribe, turn on that post notification bell. Check out the Twitch. Join the Discord. Do all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, it's basically how you carry silver in a nutshell. Or bronze, whatever rank you may be. That is within like the gold four range where most people are stuck. It's like Silver 1 MMR. Yeah. It's gonna be it. This account will probably be a master tier next season. Alright, so now we're done with uh, the full commentary side of things. Now I'm going to be talking about where the carry potential lies in consistently carrying games. Now this doesn't even have to be reliant on you playing Fizz as a champion. You could be playing Echo, Diana, Dowland. I mean, this is how you consistently generate leads in the early game and snowball that to victory. So, where the carry potential t lies usually in the top tier players when it comes to smurfing in low elo because, you know, uh, we're just comparing and contrasting. One thing is back timings. Back timings are very important whether you are overstaying or understaying, like you back too quickly when you literally need to stay a wave or else if you lose that, la if you lose that wave, you lose the laning phase it gets you know harder to come back in games when uh the higher the rank you are of course and throws happen all the time in low elo so i'd recommend you don't ff but back timings are very important look at the vod reviews i did and look at the actual gameplay the times i back are very precise and it's usually reliant on cannon waves same time with roaming do not roam when you don't have minions to work with if you get shoved in by diana zed they take two tower planings you lose two waves again crucial mistake you've lost yourself the laning phase everything is calculated off cannon waves and ride games since mid lane is such a strong role they've tried to nerf mid lane by making cannon minion give less i'm pretty sure some of them have less armor now so they get killed by towers quicker and so forth but roaming is still very important on fizz to know and playing around the 2v2 jungles which isn't done enough in low elo by low elo i'm referring to anything d4 lower no, I'd say P1 lower. Or, no, honestly, I'd say P3 lower. I don't know. It starts to be done P2 up where you're starting to see diamond players, I guess. Starting to. see, But not consistently done, right? Um, Now, like as you saw, being where fights aren't at. If you're top lane when drag is being fought over, if you're bot lane when Baron's being fought over, these splits 
need to be timed so that way you could actually be at the fight when they occur. If your team is getting engaged on and they die, I mean, that is just, you, you, you kind of are throwing because you, you need to be with your team. You are the fuel to your team, right? Or the carry in a way. So being where your team is at all times, where the fights are and playing towards your 2v2s early game mean a ton. And especially in this meta, I love Fizz because Fizz, you know, he teaches you about aggression, being in these fights, playing with precision calculation w plus ignite how much damage will that do how much damage will that burn playing in lane when you are playing against melees especially sometimes range bursting them 30 percent you only take 10 percent damage bursting them 50 percent you only take 20 percent this matters a lot knowing that you have ignite i have you have ignite they don't have ignite play the numbers close you'll probably win playing towards I have flash and ignite. You don't have ulti, which is your source of mobility. Let's say Ari, I'm going to go for a tower dive. You don't have flash or ult. This adds up and you need to at least not right away get it because this comes through games and games and games and games and studying, uh, trying to form habits. I mean, this is like you're literally putting in thousands and thousands and thousands of games. And honestly, the first two years I was maining fizz and stuff. I put thousands and thousands and thousands of games and I was still hard still gold three. The reason why is because, well, for me, VOD reviews meant a lot. And uh, I guess VOD reviewing and watching, of course, just high elo helped a lot. Could just be a streamer you like, watch the streamer, see their thought process, if they explained it a little bit. Or sometimes for me, I could just analyze, like compare and contrast my gameplay versus theirs. And typing Korean challenger replays because they play, in my opinion, the most optimal way. Aggression is key in solo queue. So um, after that, I mean, when it comes to team fights, number one throw, any rank below gold one, I mean, it's not focusing the right target in team fights. And something that's really advanced is playing from front to back. I'd recommend playing front to back when you're in diamond, <laughs> diamond only, diamond only, where you're literally prioritizing whoever's in the front of the fight and you're going your way back because your ADC is probably most fed. You need to peel for them. And well, yeah, you're going to be as a source of kind of peel, but you're playing from front to back. Don't do that. Just go for the back line. Whoever's most important, go for the back line. You may want to throw your shark on the front so that way it kind of zones them, it puts awkward barrier around, especially jungle fights, but you want to play towards back line only whoever's most fed cassiopeia the adc the support sometimes focus them they're healers they're the damage dealers you focus them now early laning phase tips slash um mistakes i see uh, common mistakes is greeting for cs like i said in the vod reviews and the actual gameplay greeting for cs pre-6 or pre-3 and then having to back early with only enough for like boots, sometimes not even boots, but you just get chunked early. You don't know when to give up CS, you greed for them. You get chunked, you can't trade, you recall at awkward spots. They shove in waves, they get two waves on you, they get experience lead on you, and it loses you the landing phase. Very common mistake, even no matter what rank you are. Sometimes it happens in all ranks. I mean, like greed is just, it's, it's bad, it's bad. So that's common mistake number one. Common mistake number two would be stepping way too far up for trades. Now, I know this is kind of like hypocritical knowing that I'm saying play up, but if they're literally walking back and then just using their poke abilities while you're running at them, if they can tad, okay, this is advanced. I'm pretty sure they'll mess this up in low elo, but tethering is where they're walking back and forth between uh, your Q range, right? If they know your Q range, if they stand outside of the Q range and they keep poking you, you just get poked, can't do much. You're just taking damage and they can just farm from a far away distance. Ziggs, as you saw, Seraphine. I mean, these bell calls, all these champions can do this. And uh, Anivia sometimes with her autos and Q, all these champs can do it, but you have to find ways around that. Whether that's getting jungle pressure, knowing that they'll always be shoved up, getting engages with your r and then going in like that trying to play for your r once your r lands they'll probably burn flash or something after their flash is blown then you're looking to play really aggressive with your ewq but you really have to watch my vod reviews to know what times to really go in at and then like i said i explained it before back timings are very important because the time you back the time you roam yeah roam timings 
will win or lose you the laning phase. It's both a pro and a con. You can mess this up at the same time your opponent can mess this up. And you can generate consistent CS and XP leads this way. And then utilize that lead to actually fight with your team. So yeah, I mean, that is generally all I have. I mean, this applies to basically everyone. Di Diana, Talon, Echo, basically all champions. Fizz players tend to main second, right? So, I mean, that's biggest mistakes, early laning phase tips and tricks, and so forth. Also, not getting or clearing camps late game is kind of just like a minor thing, but you really do need to maximize the amount of XP you get. Get the blue buff, get the gromp if you're ahead. I mean, it's just the best thing to do, especially if your jungler's topside not farming it, not having enough time. Clear the camps and side lane, side lane, side lane, side lane. If you get ahead and you just stay mid, you guaranteed will throw your lead in an instant you don't have any xp you're gonna fall behind in xp fall behind in cs and boom just like that you are uh useless so again you fall off late game so early mid is when you really do need to make plays snowball that into lead after lead after lead close the game out before they build mr or ways to fight against you all right so now i'm going to, going to go over how to counter fizz now how to counter fizz is uh not, not too simple but I know, yeah, low elo, he has high win rates. It's the fact that it's very hard to counter Fizz if you don't know what his goals, objectives, and way he does them are. What happens most of the time is they either don't harass him properly from one to three, they don't zone him properly, they don't make the gap huge, so that way he can't rotate to 2v2 fights in the jungle, and... Uh, yeah, it's basically the setup early game. Early game means a lot. So basically what happens is you either permanently shove, giving room for Fizz to turn level three really healthily, healthily, so that way he could trade back and then he kind of just wins most matchups level three, even counter picks if he plays them correctly, right? And uh, it's wave manipulation. That is key. And that is something that shows maybe, it's, it's, it's I'm being honest, it's like D2 plus. I mean, it's very hard to set up waves to make it so that they crash as soon as scuttle crab spawns you want to have a huge wave stack it make it crash when scuttle crab spawns so that way fizz has no prio over scuttle crab and you could just rotate while he has to literally farm the wave mid if he goes to the 2v2 fight and it doesn't go well he lost the lane right there right then and there playing for wave prio is really key there are people like echo i mean ari a lot of champions if you play for wave, Fizz is really good when he gets into melee range, but he sucks when it comes to wave clear up until like level nine, whereas E one shots the back wave. But again, it's probably not the best, right? Echo, Ari, all these champions do better than him. If you shove him in properly and play a strategy around shoving him in, really common matchup is Echo. Shove him in properly. Don't fight him. Outscale him, knowing that a lot of the mages outscale Fizz. And then, yeah, just play for wave prio and jungle fights. You basically win. Uh, really easy counters are also melee tanks, whether that's Garen, very common counter pick. I mean, you could pick, uh, I don't know. There's other champions. There's Swains, there, there's Swain, Lissandra, Galio, all these champs that can build tank. They don't die by Fizz, they out damage him, and uh, it's really hard for him to get uh, a lead. Cast in, these, these are all picks that counter him. He could still win these matchups, but you have the upper hand, definitely. And. The only way he wins if he has a lot more game knowledge than you. So, yeah, you can pick Renekton. I mean, they're set. All these champions who can build MR but still out damage you just are crazy. So, there's that. And then in team fights, if you have CC that you're holding on to that's point and click, click it on Fizz, he's dead. I mean, it's as simple as that. But then again, he's coming from flanks. Or if, yeah, of course, he's coming from the front. Yeah, just, just, if you can somehow CC him and make it so that he can't zone us then he's dead all right so now talking about counter pick lanes i mean i'm going to be covering most lanes that you'll play you'll play against mid and how to maybe counteract that start with ari ari's a lane where i feel like in high elo can be like a medium difficulty matchup but most of the time it's just going to be easy especially if you play it correctly right 
So, of course, you're going to give Ari Pryo up until level three. The way will crash. You hit level three. Now you have room to trade. You have Corrupting Potion versus her Duran Ring most of the time, which means you have more sustain. You'll probably have more damage. What can happen, the reason why I say medium difficulty matchup is as soon as you're in mid-Q animation, Ari can drop E, W, Q, and then with the W movement speed, run away from your E. So that alone, especially if she has a wave, can mess you up. You have to find ways around that. Whether that's E, W, Q, and then trying to bait out her charm. You out damage her, but her E, if you just straight up Q at her, can destroy you. Another counter is people say her ult is a counter to your R. Which is why I say go for mid-range sharks. Don't go for long-range sharks. Throwing your shark at far away distances can uh, be easy to dodge. I mean, she just presses R. She, she has two dashes left. You have maybe your E, but then she could play on the aggressive side of things and things won't look too good. Also playing for roams, the 2v2 jungle fights, you will absolutely demolish Ari in these fights. I mean, she, early game especially, these 2v2 fights for Scuttlecrab, your, your, your jungler, Kha'Zix, Olaf, better double scuttle because she's pretty weak in the 2v2 situations depending well i mean maybe if she's paired with olaf she could win but most of the time you'll win so play for the 2v2 fights next we are going to talk about akali a definitely hard matchup in high elo can feel impossible low elo more manageable level one just onwards she uses no mana so she tries to just q q q q q q q q chunk you Mid animation of Q, she uses E, gap closes away, gets her auto passive in uh, because, yeah, her circle mark, right? And she autos you, that out damages you again, and it is very hard to play. This lane, level six, you may have opportunity where you have six, but again, she has her E. That's her way to dodge it. She will be expecting this. Well, depends the player you're playing against. If you land a far away shark and she W shrouds, you could E, W, Q, and then start to snowball from there. You get a kill because, you know. But if she plays around this, she really does try to dodge it. I mean, it's, it's a really hard lane. I'm being honest. If she gets Merc Treads and maybe Resolve, this lane will almost feel impossible. But that usually doesn't happen. They don't rush Mercs. They don't get Resolve up until Diamond 3-ish, right? Where they try, like, they optimize best, best. Where they optimize best, best. But again, playing for that lane is pretty hard. She outtrades you because of her, her uh, passive autos and her Q poke is crazy, crazy strong. Knowing that it's run on energy, not mana. So you can't even beat her in resources. And mid game, she could play as a better version of you in these team fights. Absolutely just being killer. Akali's mid game, you know Akali's mid game. It's insane. Even with the reworked item, she is a very strong champion and is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, even after the nerfs, she's still a pretty strong champion, right? Now talking about the Annie lane, a lane where I want to say it's a pretty easy matchup. I mean, for the most part, if you can get into range, if she's holding on to stun, yeah, there's just there's just so many ways to beat beat her. You WQ, she stuns you, you E on top of her, even her E shield isn't enough. Plop down on her, that's a slow auto auto out traded. I mean, as long as you don't get poked out repeatedly by Q, stand at a really far distance, get zoned, whatever. She shoved up. She has no mobility. Ping your jungler. Come mid if he doesn't come mid. I mean, it is what it is. Get shoved under tower. Try to play it safe a little bit. She has no mobility for your art. Toss out that long range shark. E on top of her. WQ. And the counter around Fizz is going to be stopwatch and resolve tree for the most part. And sometimes sorcery if you take noobifying orb, but... Yeah, this lane is, uh, she's a mobile. Just try to stay safe. And uh, when she doesn't have stun up, I mean, it's a free lane. You go in and you win. So that's that's basically the Annie lane. Aurelian Soul, I mean, this is not really too much to cover. I mean, Aurelian Soul is a pretty easy lane. He is a Rome Reliant champion, right? And anyone who's melee pretty much counters him. You are the worst counter, if I'm being honest. Your shark, I mean, he can't dodge it unless he has flash. And if you WQ on top of him, auto, 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 he, he loses. And let's say he retracts his things to make them close. So that way it's a melee range. W, auto, 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 or Q, auto, auto, Q, W, auto, auto, auto. E, flop down, boom. He slowed, auto, auto. It's, 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 it's a really easy lane. I mean, you shouldn't struggle too hard with this. The only way he plays for Pyle is through uh, 
wave clear and shove but if you literally stand in front of the wave he doesn't have long range wave clear he does he's not a ziggs he's not an echo he he is very medium range style champion and after the rework i think he's a weaker champion right it spins faster oh did they revert it i remember it just spun really quickly i guess i'm wrong but no it's just an easy lane in general just get in his face mess him up and uh you might have to let him play for like first back because his well no you could actually cheese level one, uh first blood a lot of the times but his wave clear early on and his potential to just w and then phase rush to kite you back pre first back is actually kind of there but there's ways around it especially if you're playing in the lower tiers so um azir one of those lanes where if you can get into range he's an easy lane i mean you could ease r everyone knows that but his wq of course it pokes from a long range distance it sucks but if you could manage your way to just q e on top of him and so forth get into range w auto him and uh yeah landing far range sharks i know he's gonna q e away but again you e his r and uh i don't know this lane if he takes no barrier exhaust stopwatch it's pretty easy lane but if he does then it becomes more tricky and then again you could play for the 2v2 jungle fights early game i emphasize on that a lot because that's what fizz is known to be good at these early game fights <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> on to i don't want to cover brand i mean brand's pretty meta and all you just have to dodge his Q and you win this lane. I'm just kidding. That's it's too simple. But you're not going to play against him a lot. So, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Times I did play against him, I stomped him. If he doesn't build Stopwatch, post 6, you just you, you you destroy him. I mean, he doesn't build Merc Treads. That just isn't a thing he buys. Long range Shark him. And then, should be GG. The Cassiopeia lane, a medium difficulty matchup. But, I mean, you can get the upper hand a lot of the times. Uh, Pre like you need to kick up the game flow as fast as possible her w can maybe shut you down a little bit especially if you're trying to you know dash in with q she could w q and then uh w q e e e e and then you lose the trade she phase rushes away if you e her w if you can just get into range even if you plop on top of her it slows her with your e w just walk out of her w and then q onto her and then as long as she doesn't rent, land two rotations of her q you should be fine long range sharking her is something you could do pretty often i mean she doesn't have too much mobility and like like a dash to leap away and uh what's it called 2v2 fights early game like usual her early laning phase sucks her early laning phase absolutely sucks. She's mana reliant. She doesn't deal too, too much damage for you to worry about. And it's easy to gain leads from early to mid game, if I yeah, were to say. And she would usually take exhaust or barrier. Corky's a lane. You kind of have to play it semi like Lucian. Play for the mid game. Be even in CS for the early portions. He's going to, you're, you're never going to see him. After the they reworked items, he sucks. No offense, but if you're a Corky main, I feel bad. He's so, he's like absolutely dog right now. If you play against it, this guy, this guy's free low. He doesn't scale as hard as he used to, and I mean he he's just he's terrible. So look, he plays like a terrible version of Lucian. What will happen is he'll poke you out. If you stay half in CS and even in levels, you should be able to win mid game. You could well maybe rush Seekers to help, but at the same time he does a good amount of AP, so it won't help too too much. It'll help, but it won't fix your problems like how it will with lucian in a way but you know both lanes are pretty hard uh his w gap close of course counters your q you have to play for jungler assistance and honestly play for that mid game burst and side lane him if possible how to play the, the how to play the diana lane watch the video <laughs> where i went over how to play the first vod i went over i played against diana this was diamond one game um just in general she's a champion that shoves no matter what because of her passive her q she's just in the kit she outtrades you with w for sure especially early game if you don't play it correctly she takes conqueror taking fast trades short trades where you burst her just a little bit live just go 50 if you go 50 50 hp with her there's a chance that uh 
if you play it correctly if you e her r most important do not ever e when she has r do not ever e don't e her e don't e her w e her r because you know that deals the most amount of damage and so forth but this is a pretty medium i people say hard i say medium difficulty the reason why is because her champion design has flaws that are easy to abuse like her constant shoving and her simplistic kit mid game i mean she, she's just gonna go in with e you see here like she has no e she has like like fizz immobile mobility that's really hard to stop right she has really good split push compared to you but if you're able to get a lead early to mid game then in theory she might maybe depending what she builds like merc shreds stopwatch like you saw the diana in my game do she might maybe have the upper hand but if you're that ahead then you stomp her like as you saw in the vod review from my first one uh play for jungler assistance if possible because she's going to be shoving in waves but you could also play for trading honestly especially if she doesn't take ex uh, ig ignite and resolve tree um yeah echo lane this should in theory be an easy lane he has relatively like spot on like you, you you see what he's doing um if you're in low elo this probably won't happen at all anything above plat three and people who one trick echo that know how to play this matchup a bit well will know how to do this he plays for q prio if he's not playing for q prio if he's not queuing the wave queuing the wave queuing the wave playing for wave prio he is completely playing the lane wrong you win this straight up you out trade him and you can e his w the thing to worry about is if he gets his passive auto, he can movement speed away from your E, right? But the thing is, is that if he doesn't get his passive, if you fast trade him, you absolutely out trade him with auto WQ while he just Q's E's you, doesn't get the last part of his passive. If he doesn't get the last part of his passive, you completely out trade him. You can start a lead. I mean, once you start that lead, that's yet. Well, I don't know. It, oh, I'm talking about if he's not playing for wave. If he he's not playing for wave, not constantly queuing the wave, shoving you under tower, making sure you lose minions under tower while he's gaining minions, and then he's scaling for the late game. He outscales you, but your early game is key. It is crucial that you don't let him set up. If you let him set up, then uh, yeah, it's a pretty painful time. Because then he outscales you, and then you're going to be useless knowing that he out CS you, knowing his wave clear is better. So... Take Ignite, Flash, like usual. Play for that aggressive level 2, level 3. Smash him. Easy. You win. Play for that laning phase. Win that laning phase. And uh, roam. Yeah, even in the side lanes, if you have a lead, you, you win. So, I mean, even though he, he's playing for wave clear, which means your jungler can also gank on top of that. Now talking about like high elo-ish, he's going to play for wave. Level 1, level 2. Or maybe not level 1, level 2. More like level 3, right? He's going to Q. Q, 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 shove you in, shove you in, shove you in. And either you focus the minions or you focus him. The pro to this is his Q is always on cooldown. He has no way to damage or get his three-part passive. Go in. It doesn't matter. You'll miss maybe a minion. The wave will crash, whatever. You take a little bit of minion damage. Play for your aggression early game. Your aggression early game means a lot in this lane. And actually out-trading him. But, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. How to play against Fizz versus Fizz. Be the better Fizz. Next. The Garen lane. If they ever counterpick you with Garen, just dodge. Just kidding. Uh, you could rush Seekers. His Q is automatically going to hit you. Even if you E play for just tower uh, farm under tower, he's going to Q you under tower. It is what it is. Out regen you with his Duran shield and his passive. This is the most just disgusting lane in the world. He's going to rush Merc Treads if he's smart and Strider Breaker out damage you at the same time. Be more tankier. The only pro is that his mid game is probably going to be worse than yours if you're losing by like half gold right because he is his his uh, kid is one one-sided but he can play for 2v2s ah it's just a pain really a pain number one counter pick i recommend highly recommend stomp him <laughs> stomp the fizz players with garen mid i'm telling you 
it, it works it works so i'm redinger a lane that if he doesn't have stopwatch you completely just demolish him rwq i'll trade him he's going to be squishy because he goes ap most of the time right he's going to shove you in most of the time you could look for a gank to get a gank depending what your jungler is if it's a tank jungler i recommend you don't get ganked but if it's like a least lee sin someone who could quickly burst or kick him out of his turret range i mean go for it but i mean this is lane i guess it's is never picked at least for, for the most part he's gonna get less than like a 0 0.001 pick rate it's it's really only one tricks are playing him but in the times i did play him i played against him your mid game's probably gonna be stronger uh you're always gonna get shoved under tower so you can't roam i don't know just win lane q w <laughs> q w e away burst them out try to get him low and then look for a tower dive not tower dive but play for burst him 50 percent while you take 30 percent damage because in quick trades you absolutely demolish him but if you can e you and then this turrets three three turrets just beam you you're, you're dead but just play for like short short bursty trades and you should be fine do 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 okay the cast in lane the lane i banned last season i think he's strong with the new ever ever frost build or ludens he scales for mid game right right the he scales for mid game really hard but aggression is key early on start i usually start w and then i play for wave level one and then uh if he steps up i auto w after his Q runs out, you have to wait until his Q magic thing runs out. Unless he's queuing you in that case. Yeah, I don't know. Just waiting it out is best if you can. Afterwards, I mean, he's a pretty bad champion. Pre first back and pre first item ish. So you out trade him. You can play towards that 2v2 fights in the jungle and roams, but he outscales you like a beast. You have to keep in mind. Yep. If he gets a roam off, he gets a kill. He gets that snowball started. I mean, you're done for. He's just going to be. Just a better version of you late game, mid to late game. Playing for that early game, starting W, playing for that aggressive, playing for the wave, playing for the minions, crashing it, warding, and then it's gonna bounce back. After you crash a big wave under his tower, it bounces back, try to freeze it. But again, he might take TP and then look to back for tier. And then in that case, he's out resourcing you. So TP, oh man, TP compared to your ignite. If you can't cheese the early game kill, it's gonna be quite the tough time. So. Kasten's definitely one of his, uh, Fizz's bad, bad counters. Katarina lane, definitely medium difficulty matchup. There, depending on your experience, you could say it's easy, but it, it's going to be around medium. She could outplay it with, especially her going AD. Definitely outscales you. Definitely better at roaming than you. And, uh, yeah, plays for roams and picks. Afterwards, gets ahead, snowballs that into team fights, and boom. I mean, she just snowballs like crazy with Kakin slayer um but what does she build ravenous hydra her build is so dumb i don't know blade of the rune king playing for that laning phase starting w she's gonna have q she's gonna be a basically useless champion early on she's just gonna q the wave if she wants to yes but then again it's gonna bounce back to you um i play for a slow push you should play for a slow push into a crash then ward right for the jungler because in this lane you're going to be playing pretty aggressive early on you don't want to get cheesed don't get double daggered don't get double daggered e one of her daggers e two of her daggers if possible but play for the daggers because uh yeah this the champion all in landing her daggers if you could e that great post six make sure to e her ulti and play for burst if you're ahead you burst her like crazy if she's not building merc threats wq boom she's she's bursted playing for short bursty trades and then not letting her stack conquer and just get resets like crazy with her uh not resets but um nice dagger hits on you because then that'll stack conquer and then she does a lot of damage if you E and then fall down and after she R's you, you you're shredded to death it's over she plays yeah the early portion of the landing phase will determine how the later portions will go basically mm -mm, mm -mm. LeBlanc a pretty interesting matchup I say you could say some people say easy some people say hard is what the rank you are and how you interpret this lane this lane is more 
I want to say easy, if I'm being honest, because you you E her QW, you can E her E. She has a lot of mobility for sure, but if you gap close onto her, she uses her W, R, on top of that W in mid animation as you see that W. It lands, it reveals her spots. Even if she gets her mimic, her, it's all in landing your R. If you can land your R, I mean, it's crazy. You'll, of course, get the knight early on, but level three, you could actually start looking for trades. You start looking for trades, aggressive plays, and play towards close numbers. If you could dodge her E, her E is like her number one thing to set up with. And if you get hit by E, most likely she'll change you with E. So dodging E is essential. But if she, if you can dodge her QW, early laning phase even better because then her E is kind of useless. She could just pair that up with autos. But if she, if you're playing aggressive and she's just Eing you as you Q, that's like the worst thing in the world. You never want that. Qing, dashing forward, and then she just E's you. Ease you again, QW. Don't ever. That's why they say it's a hard matchup. If she plays more reactively, but uh, if she plays proactively, this will. That's why in low elo, the players who play proactively, they, if they do it wrong, you can abuse them for that, and then win lane off them playing aggressive since you have minion advantage. But this lane, just land your shark, E whichever is important, her E or QW, and you should be good. This 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 uh list is probably it's just gonna go over the popular <laughs> the popular picks you know i mean you're not gonna play against canon kale that much i hope you can apply what i've said into other lanes too hopefully lissandra a counter pick to fizz i mean it is a counter she does cc you she tries to wave clear you with q what is key is you don't stand next to the wave so that way she cues the wave and it hits you at the same time with q stand at the side or stand at the side of the wave so that way it doesn't hit you and then uh after she cues you could probably cue onto her and then look for trades i mean this lane if she isn't taking aftershock she'll take more burst damage she's taking comet but aftershock i mean it hurts a lot but i don't know you have to play really close with numbers and then late game she outscales you because she's just better than you mid game is to be able to step it up make plays if she's not going a tanky build she's going loot ins maybe even everfrost go in make the plays use ignite before she r's because that counters her healing and uh yeah play passive pre level three and then post level three maybe look for boost but after your first back come back to lane and then try to sauce things up if you're playing against lulu uh Tell them to uninstall this game in all chat and then leave the game. Now, talking about Lux, a pretty easy lane. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Her wave clear isn't that good. Her E takes uh, two times. She has to E twice before she can wave clear it, right? So, you're not going to really get shoved, shoved under tower to the point where it's a threat. And her only source of mobility is her Q. If you E or Q, I know what I'm been saying before you you q in and then um mid animation q she q's right if you e w q and even if she lands the q you're still going to be on top of her bop her with these auto attacks and uh she's an easy lane in general she has no mobility toss out the shark if she doesn't flash it she's dead pretty easy lane you can play for 2v2s you can play for roams you can play for objectives uh pretty weak laner high elo below elo i don't know you play off their mistakes Make it work more often. But this should, in theory, be an easy lane for you. The Malzahar lane. Uh, some people know Elo say, yeah, he space aids. Impossible counter. Uh, if you understand how the champion is designed, he is very immobile. And only goal is just to shove you in and ult you whenever you try to make an aggressive player. Or whenever he has kill threat. After he wave out wave clears you, he's a control mage. Low Elo, that's why he's like s tier you know what i mean but high elo literally if you get into range if you get into range where you can attack him he's dead he, he is absolutely trash q him w him play, play aggressive he's a mid range he has to e a minion so i mean you're gonna be in range to qw and then you can e on top of him as long as they're junglers they're not to get uh they're junglers they're not there you can play as aggressive as you want stomp him gain leads through just playing straight up aggressive and once you gain a lead if you have proto belt proto belt get off his shield r him e w q him and i mean aggression is key in this lane if you're not playing aggressive enough 
then you're gonna lose because he's just gonna wave clear minion after minion after minion shove you under tower he's gonna get cs lead boom he r's you with leandri's tournament while you're still building into your hextech rocket belt and just out damage you in general especially if he takes ignite but uh, exhaust and tp is where he's gonna find more success in because that kind of counters fizz a bit more but should be an easy lane for you just get the hang of things of playing aggressive and uh yeah now talking about the Oriana lane level three is going to be quite the pain i mean levels one to three you have to give prio right this is why Oriana can be an easy at the same time kind of hard lane because she understands your kit oh man she will make this the hardest time to get ahead but um let her, let her have the lane one to three i mean she just is a better version of you <laughs> not a better version but will just out damage you in every aspect of things and if you're trying to play aggressive she plays more on the passive side of things since she knows she's outscales you and stuff but um if you're playing aggressive though her auto her minion wave will auto attack you and then she has w slow as soon as you fall down from e and you have no abilities to trade with her e tanks your full e damage so i mean it's really hard she has w to kite you out with it's her lane her lane one to three but after one to three maybe even after first back then you can look to start playing aggressive eing her qw so that way she has no more slow she's gonna e on top of her but if you're level four you double hop and you e her and then wq she won't have phase rush so she won't have mobility to go away exhaust barrier all these things counter you but as long as it's not exhaust and yeah as long as it's not exhaust you should have success in this lane don't uh she's gonna have phase rush right don't let her have phase rush and then shoot your r because then she'll just walk away from it um she has w and then her phase rush which will give her ultra movement speed she'll just dash away from it and it's just annoying so um yeah just i don't know just Watch Korean Challenger VODs on how to play this lane because this lane's very detailed. And if you want to consistently gain leads in this lane, it takes a lot. Play for the 2v2 jungle fights like usual. But then again, if she's playing for wave management and pushing you in properly, it's going to be hard. But you can find moments around that where you can play aggressive if you E her QW and so forth. Now talking about Silas, a definite counter to Fizz because of his W heal, especially if he's maxing W. If he doesn't take uh, TP, then you actually are good. Believe it or not, Ignite is not a good thing to take on Silas against Fizz because he has the damage to kill you and using it for more utility backs, better backs, better back timings, more XP lead, and then Fizz has to back at awkward timings. You could take tower platings and so forth. TP is better for him, right? But early on, start W. I mean, Silas with Jess E is uh, pretty bad. If he dashes on, you W him, auto, auto, and you should be fine. But he scales like a beast. If he gets that first back in, Dark Seal Durin Ring, Dark Seal Boots. I mean, at this point, he starts to outtrade you, gets two to three points in his W. It's hard. It's a very hard time. Use Ignite. If you're. How you have to play this lane is through. It's really hard to play it through short burst, short burst, short burst. Because look, you short burst him, you engage him. He W's, and boom, he's healed 300 HP. Now you, you, you got it traded. He pressed one button. I say play more on the reactive side of things, let him shove, and then play for jungle assistance since most of the time you can make it so that he shoved up. But if you are able to get a lead, start W level one, and that may actually give you momentum to snowball that into level three kill with Ignite. Other than that, if you don't, then how you're going to kill him is from 100 to zero. He's not the type to rush Zonia's or get stopwatch. Maybe resolve, but just auto him. Get get the resolve off. R him at a far range after it's preferably after he uses E, and then try to just one shot burst him and ignite him before he uses W. Play for burst, and uh, sh lane should be in your favor. But if he gets Merc treads, that might mess things up. But he's not the champion to get Merc treads or resolve. That's the thing. So play for burst and uh, jungle assistance sometimes. How to play the Syndra lane? Very common lane, but I mean it's pretty easy just don't get harassed early on in the levels once you're level three then you can start going for trades what is crucial is that you e her e and then she is it's game over 
throw up play for lane of course because she's medium range not really far range mage you could uh yeah she's gonna get into your q range so you, you're fine and then post six you could e her e you could e her r there's just a lot of ways to negate her cc and damage and she's a mobile so throw a far range shark and you should be a-okay all right <clears throat> How to play against Twisted Fate, pretty easy lane. I mean, he plays for lane pyro, kind of like Echo a little bit, but if you he's a medium ranged uh mage style play. So if you're able to get into range, bop him, easy win. And uh yeah. Just get into range. He plays for wave clear and roam. So if you're able to stomp him, toss out a long range shark, he has no mobility to dodge that. Stand in front of the wave, he's a medium range, so he just can't touch the wave and it's really easy to set up tower dives, especially if you time it with cannon waves. And he might rush Merc Treads, but he's still damageable. He's still squishy. There's ways to win this lane. Just don't let him play for wave clear and roams. Play for aggression. Talking about Vagar, his goal is to scale. Your goal is to play aggressive. Play aggressive. Make sure that you save your E, either to E on top of him for guaranteed auto damage afterwards. Because after he uses his Q and W, I mean, he's really a mobile and trash but um eing his e is just number one counter you could shark him at far rate away distances play for the 2v2s play for roams play for aggression while he's just going to be useless scaling also easy to set up tower dives on like really easy so i mean a lot of these lanes with the mages that you counter it just comes to your aggression and playing around that champion identity so now talking about the Vladimir lane, a lane that can be a hard matchup, but is actually an easy matchup. If you actually know how things work with Vladimir, every time his Q is down, you are going for a trade. My friend, the wave crashes. Once you hit level three, you are constantly looking to trade and play around his bar. I mean, if you're able to play aggressive properly, when his bar is down, you're going to be able to zone him. You're going to be able to control the lane. And since you have ignite, there's a lot of tower dive opportunity knowing that his abilities take away his HP. And if you ignite, his healing won't be that good. There's a lot of ways to set up early game kills. Afterwards, snowball that into early kills in general. Play for the 2v2 fights in the jungle. Just control the game in general. And the only way... The only thing he has over you is outscaling. So if he's just playing safe, farming it out, then you're losing lane because you're actually supposed to be playing on the aggressive side of things. So play around his bar and post three, you should be looking to play aggressive, play aggressive, play aggressive and set up dives. If he's actually just playing safe under tower because it's actually doable. His Q cooldown for his second part where it heals him a lot is going to be long ish, especially without cooldown reduction. And he's not tanky without HP. So you should be good early game. Just play aggressive, play aggressive, play aggressive. Look to pressure with Ignite and Flash and Tower Dive. All right, so the Yasuo lane. Yasuo lane, let him have prio level one. But once you get level two, you could start looking for auto trades and then Eing his Q. What he tries to do is E your E, which is fine. But it's playing towards short trades early game. If you play this with precision, you should be fine and uh yeah if he is somehow managing the wave better than you that's like the only way i see you losing this lane if he's freezing the tower near his tower if you are getting the wave in an awkward spot that's how he dominates you but if you can get the wave if he's playing aggressive queuing queuing you getting your minions to attack him the wave shoves towards you if you could freeze the tower in the front you have full lane control i mean it's gonna be very hard for him to trade you you maybe could rush yeah you could actually rush seeker if he's a problem because all his damage is ad seekers is op against ad assassins or just ad bruisers in general and play towards early game early mid because late game he will outscale you so early mid you could find ways to get ahead and uh yeah play off that zame yone his brother uh you know Kind of the same thing, except in my opinion, he's kind of an easier matchup. His early game is pretty weak. You out damage him early to mid, definitely, but he outskills you. Yone players, what they like to do is Q, second part Q, charge it towards you, dodge it with your E, plop down on them, W, auto, auto, auto. They're going to be playing on the aggressive side of things when they Q forward. And yeah, I mean, 
I'm, I'm not kidding. That's, yeah, they, they, they love doing that. Just queuing forward out of nowhere to wave clear or just in general play aggressive. E, that, flop down, auto, auto, auto. You ought to trade him with WQ. Short trades are your cup of tea. And uh, maybe Eing his W if he's not using anything else to combo you with. So, should be an easy lane. Uh, now, talking about the Z lane, the number one lane out, or, you know, people's favorites. Outplay versus outplay. You could E his R, he could R your R. It is a beautiful lane. If you get Seekers and he doesn't get Hex Drinker or Merc Treads, should be a free lane for you. I mean, I'm being honest. The Seekers really does counter his damage. You can play on the aggressive side of things. And my tip is if you are him from a far away distance, stay out of his R zone so that way the R actually hits him. Even if he W's away or walks away, that's fine. It damages him. That's the goal. Unless you can one shot burst or unless you could kill him if you're ahead. R him. Expect him to R. E when he R or E when he R's, of course. And a lot at the last second, he'll spawn behind you. You flop down. W, Q him, and then uh, you should win from there. But early, early landing phase, he definitely can have the upper hand. But yeah, post first back. It's either it's, you could cheese first blood. He could cheese first blood. Play that as you will. Wave means a lot. Post first back where you get Seekers. He, depending on what he gets, if he gets Shredded Dirk, easiest lane of your life. If he gets Merc Treads, then you, you basically aren't going to kill each other. I'm being honest. It's gonna be hard for you guys to kill each other then it's a resident sleeper lane but other than that i mean uh he or both people can have the upper advantage depending on how they play it mechanically early to mid game especially post six and it comes down to playing the lane a lot and uh learning yeah now last champion on this list zillion kind of similar to malzahar if you can counter of a counter right because he has r which negates your assassin's style of play which is killing whoever's most important but if you're able to e onto him q w onto him not let him push with his uh bombs and resets right and he can not e kite you out e run away don't shark him at longer range distances since he'll just e and run away which is annoying play towards playing aggressive early game and exactly that i mean it's same with malzahar if you can get into range you just win this lane and he, he just plays for lane that's it he just cues waves he cues and he tries to get wave prio if he doesn't get wave prio if you're standing in front playing super hyper aggressive then you win this lane because zillion's the type of person not to go any defensive items all right, so that guide literally took me 50 plus hours to make. If you guys please could smash that like button, that would mean a ton. Turn on, on that post notification bell. Commenting below for the algorithm. And uh, yeah, that would be really appreciated. If you have any questions, make sure to comment below because I'm pretty sure a lot of people can help you in the comment section. And hopefully you learned Fizz from a master tier plus level where you could implement those tips into your games. So in the future, you could be master tier and then teach the rest. Yep, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for making it this far. I'm out. Peace. Make sure to check out my Twitch where I do play uh, play Fizz very often, whenever I can. Unless I'm in my secondary jungle role, but I play Fizz a lot. So check out the Twitch indeed. I'm out. Peace.